Okay, sounds like we're started. So um, it's six o'clock. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments to the uh, select board agenda at all? I don't have any. I'm not sure if mine will fall under there or not. Well, um, go ahead and, and. I had a phone call the other night about renting tables and chairs from the town hall. Okay. Are we still in lockdown or is that's a good question. We should probably um, let's have that in a, be an adjustment to the agenda and we will discuss that. <laughs> okay. Probably see what the updated guidance on the VLCT right. is. We're getting close. I know that. Uh, um, because it will be rented for an outside party. It won't be in the town hall. Oh, then how are they going to, are they going to be out in the parking area or? Nope. They're going to take it to their home and use them. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. But yeah, me either. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Okay. Oh, nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, and I'll make sure that they have them all cleaned up before they come back into the yep. town hall. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Um, Thank you. I ha I have kind of a slight adjustment, I guess. Um, just as I was getting ready for the meeting tonight, after I got home from work, there was a a bid estimate from the, the roofer that I was kind of counting on, um, which I sent to um, Chris and Paul. It's way more than I anticipated. So I guess we should probably talk about that. I was just gonna give an update that I was had a commitment from someone and, and I was waiting for a bid. Um, so um, I guess we'll, we'll it's, add it's that. I would, like to, I would like to talk about it as well, Michael, because it seems okay. incredibly high to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a lot higher than I expected. So let's um, let's add that to the agenda um, as other than an update. I had it listed under updates, but this is definitely, I think, more than just an update at this point um, with that bid estimate that just came in. Uh, any other adjustments at all? All right. Any public comment? Okay, I don't hear any. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? Okay, Paul, I think you said so moved, but your, your mic is off right at the moment. Sorry, so moved. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Um, any, any discussion at all? Sorry. Aye. Okay, all those aye. in favor? Aye, aye. Okay, good. Um, so do I hear a motion to approve the minutes to the May 10th, um, 2021 select board meeting? Motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Second. Any discussion at all about the minutes? No. Um, then do I hear a vote to approve? Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right, um, town clerk's report. Okay, I had an um, email come in from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that they wanted a name and an email address to put on their contact listing for any upcoming trainings or meetings or whatever. So I put Paul Council on that. Um, Paul, does that sound, sound right? I, th I think that's perfect. But yeah, I think that's fine. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I have the um, select board listing taking Brian's name off and putting Chris's on for Secretary of State's office. Yep. And okay. I have um, James, I cannot pronounce his last name, our tree warden. Do you know what his last name is? No. <laughs> um, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't. It is. Let me see. It is spelled S C H W E I T H E L M. Schweitzel. However you pronounce that. So and I have. Just, yes. Um, you're just adding them to a list. Yeah, for the tree warden. Um, oh, yeah. 
That's James Schweithelm is how you pronounce it. That's how you pronounce it. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Auf Deutsch. He is out there on the list of that for, I think it was from, was it Natural Resources? I forwarded that email to you, Michael. Yes, I think so. So his name is on that, and he just sent me back an email telling me that he has signed up for the tree warden training. Okay, great. Yep. And I have been doing a lot of entry in the Nemert system, putting the dog licenses in there, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a pretty smooth transition. Great. Great. And um, after I get done doing that, I'm going to start hopefully putting some of the land records in there. Mm -hmm. it, uh, in Nemrec? In Nemrec, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. We have the um, program for it now. Mm -hmm. And I guess my other question would be, are we still in the... I don't know my word I want. Still wearing masks in the office? Like if somebody comes in to do research in the vault, wear the mask when they're here? I think that's up to you folks, really. I mean, yeah. it, it is still um, requested yeah. that in, in enclosed spaces, um, people wear a mask unless they've been fully vaccinated. Right. So you don't know people coming in, you don't know whether they have or not. Right. Um, and we legally yeah. can't ask them. Yeah, in the, work, in the workplaces, no. um, if you can stay six feet apart, then you don't have to. If you're not positive someone's vaccinated, um, then you can't do it. <laughs> You'd have to put masks on. So a lot of people are just okay. wearing the mask still to, in, particularly in a small office to uh, yep. just to avoid having to get into that issue. Because I'm not, I'm not even clear about the asking of vaccination status as a HIPAA issue. Right. right. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can either. Yeah. People are doing it, but it's, yeah. I'm not sure it's legal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not legal. It's definitely not legal. You can do that. Being You're in the medical legal. field, I can't share anything with anyone. I walk in like, have you been vaccinated? I'm like, you can't ask me that. <laughs> yeah. Unless I willingly tell you. <laughs> and I'm getting yeah, more so and more familiar would, I, with the vault oh, every day. I, I, okay. I would err on the side of caution and just ask people to mask up when they're, when yeah, they're visiting. Yeah, that's what I would do. It's as simple as. Mm -hmm. yeah. As far as you guys all together, it's up to you guys if you want to mask up while you're working, is my opinion. Yeah, when it's just the three of us in here, we yeah. don't mask up. But when somebody yeah. comes in, we normally put the mask on. Yep. I I I would ask I would ask everybody who visits to mask up. I yeah. I would keep that consistent for now. Yep. Yeah. I still and I have think that more on the front door. Is out coming there. soon. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll have a better answer in a week or so. But as far as I can tell, that's yeah. I, I, that's what I would say. Okay. And, uh, Very good. Just a and recommendation. I think that's all I've got. Okay. Uh, any questions for Robin at all? Um, I don't have anything. I don't either. Um, I do not either. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Okay, so our town treasurer is on an airplane. So um, I guess we'll move on to the town highway report. Um, well, we got some things going on. Uh, the grant is, we're approximately half done that, I'd say. Okay. Um, school. Um, I've got a couple concerns. Richard Badger lives the first house. Well, I'd call it first house on the right, but there's the old Weber place that sets up on top. But, um, along front of his stone wall, they cut a ditch in there and put stone in the bottom of it. And now he's got a jog on top of his stone that they hydro seeded today and it goes back up to his wall and it's about 12 inches wide and no way to take care of it. And I'm going to get a hold of Alan tomorrow if it's all right with you guys and see if we can turn that back into a swale and leave it grass so uh -huh. he can mow it. Yeah, um, I see what you're saying. you got an unmaintained strip. Be, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then the brush is going to grow up in front of his wall. Sooner or later, it's going to deteriorate in front of that wall. Wall is going to fall over. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're creating a guy a hardship. Okay. Yep, agreed. 
Yeah, right. and it's actually, it, won't, it won't take it won't take too long for it to potentially fail. So no, no, you know, it won't. We're not we're not uh, talking about a long time here. We're talking about a few seasons, and it could actually be in we could be in trouble. So I agree with you yeah. as well. So I agree with you and Paul. Um, all right, I'm yeah. going to get a hold of Alan tomorrow to make sure we can hydroseed it and grass it. I, I can't believe that, but what we can is a culvert above his driveway. Okay. It's going to be running through grass about 120 feet, maybe, and then it'll go onto the stone ditch, and okay. we'll put a uh, check dam right there. Oh. So I wouldn't think that it would cause any problem, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it makes them quite a lot happier uh, young person. Yeah, Alan's so pretty. So we're gonna look into that tomorrow. Yeah, Alan's pretty um, reasonable. So yeah. My experience working with him. Yeah. Alan and I worked together and went to school together. And, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm sure that we won't have a problem. Yeah. But, uh, I just want to make, it, make you aware of it that the boys got ahead of me, so we're probably going to change that debt. Okay. And then Paul Betts called me over on the end of King Pond Road, I guess it is. He lives in Charity Hill, but where he's complaining about is King Pond. Uh -huh. I sent the guys over to clean the berm up alongside the road there. Yeah. And it looks like they put stuff out into the field, but they didn't. Uh -huh. uh, but I told Paul that we'd come back, clean that brush up, and make it decent on the edge of his field because mm -hmm. the lack of maintenance on that corner is due to the fact that the brush is there. And mm -hmm. So I told him we would clean that brush up and, and make it right and hydro seed it. Mm -hmm. So I guess if there's any discussion, probably now's the time to do it. It's, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred feet down across there. It ain't gonna take, there probably ain't three hours worth of work there with the excavator and making it right and hydro seeding it. Yeah, go ahead, I need to be yeah, done to do it. Yeah, making I it right is the right thing to do. I have, no, right I have no objections to do. that whatsoever. Yeah, no, I don't either. All right. yeah. Well, that's good because I already told him we'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess. Uh, right, man. You know, at we, any time, uh, you know, Chuck. In the future, you know, those kind of decisions. It, it. I mean, I appreciate you checking in with us, but you know, I definitely trust your judgment, and you know, um, you know, you're just stating making it right. It is the right thing to do. Um, right. So. Well, I just want to keep you guys posted. So yep. right, I appreciate that. Something going on that we're not. It ain't going on behind your back. That's mm -hmm. yeah. This is yep. more of just letting you guys know what I've already told the guys. Okay. All right. Um, and also we've. Uh, uh mulch for the hydro cedar mm -hmm. it's a short demand and greg told me that we shouldn't be buying a great deal because of the budget and i got a hold of milton rental he had 20 bags down there is all he had it doesn't know he's gonna get any more so i bought them all mm -hmm. but 20 bags is going to be We'll have a little left over on this grant project, but not a great deal. Mm -hmm. So when you see the bill come in, that's where that came from. Okay. okay. Yeah. And was, was Greg thinking of like waiting until the end of the fiscal year to get more? Was that what he was worried well, that's about? What he was thinking, but we needed, we needed, uh, we figured around 12 bags yeah. to do um the grant which needs mm -hmm. to be done by the end of june right yeah yeah so and then i talked to steve and he said well i've only got eight left and i don't know when the next shipment will be in so i told mm -hmm. him to send them too yeah take, take what I'm you can get we're going to be doing something that's going to need some touch up somewhere yeah well paul Beck is going to take three of them bags so mm -hmm. okay um, yeah and we got some trees that we want to take down on Wheeler Hill. Now, do we need to? Hey, hey Chuck, can I just ask a, oh, Sorry. Chuck, can I ask Go a ahead. quick question? Sorry, man. Sure. 
Um, so have we ever bought just bulk bulk mulch, just blown in the back of the one of one of the one of our trucks, as opposed to buying bagged mulch? This, um, well, this is this is not really mulch. It's it's the the paper fiber to go oh. in the hydro seat. Yeah, for yeah. the hydro seat. Oh, right. Gotcha. Never mind. All right. And it can't get wet. I yep. mean, it, it's recently. It'll start paper. to grow. It'll stick right together. Right. Yep. I got you. I was confused about what we were talking about. Uh, I'm sorry. I did say mulch, but it, it's it's actually, uh, well, I don't know yep. what you would call it. It's, it's pulp. It's pulp. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, Steve gives us a good deal on it. In fact, we're trying a new brand now. Um, the what we have been using took about an hour and a half to two hours to mix up a load. This they're doing in 15 minutes. Wow. It's got the fire all in it, got the fertilizer in it, so it should be a no way. I mean, it should be a win win situation. So, um, the trees and wheel are held. Do we need to get a hold of the, the tree warden? Uh, if they they're on private property, but they're in the right of way of the town road, they're in the right of way of the town road, and they're leaning out over the road and the power lines. Right. And we were in the process of talking to the guy we had last year, and I can't think of his name about taking down right a select few trees. I I think just to to um, kind of follow protocol and to make sure that um, that we're okay with that we probably should have the tree warden take a look at them and um, I'll use the word condemn them um, and then we should probably notify the property owner um, that we're going to be cutting down some trees on on in the town right away on their property um, okay. just so that everybody's in the loop about it y yes Robin Bins they are hanging over the power line. Should Hydric Power be notified about it? Maybe they'll take them down? They, that's true. They would do that, especially if the power line would be involved. Well, maybe. In, in uh, fact, maybe, if, yeah. if they are hanging over the power line, that our, you know, we shouldn't really hire someone to do that. We should probably uh, have Hardwick elect just in case something happens. Um, I'm sure that a professional tree removal crew could remove it without, um, you know, getting on the power line. And everything. We got a select few trees in town that we need to have taken care of. And okay. Greg and I were thinking that we should get him a full day's work so that when he come out here, he could work the full day and have it taken care of mm -hmm. because he's real good. And, yeah. you know, would really suck to try to get him out here to take down a couple of trees and, and then turn him loose because that's probably only going to happen once or twice and he ain't going to want to come back. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, um, I guess maybe we should check in with the uh, Hardwick Electric Department about the ones that are potentially. I can do um, that. Yeah. But I do agree with, with Chuck. If they're going to, if, if the Hardwick Electric's not going to come take them down, which frequently is the case if they feel that they're not dangerous. Yeah. um put it put as many together as we can and just get them done yeah. but we should call them at least and have brian come look at them mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i agree as well but hardwick electric is not very responsive in terms of timing no it's going to take them a while to get this together right and if you think that, so chuck if we have the time frame i mean i agree with everybody that we should probably make them aware right but uh if we have the time frame to do it we should probably well, we've been it. talking and right after the first July, I believe we're, we've got enough set, well, <clears throat> with those up there, we may have to find some other one somewhere, but um, we've got enough to keep him busy a day, so it'll make it worthwhile for him to come down and worthwhile for us to get him down here. Okay. Plenty of trees in Woodbury. I'm sure we can find some others to give him a day's work. Yeah. So there's been a crew that has been cutting along 14 for a for a bit now. Yeah, right that's Adam. Yeah, they're that cutting was, for Hydric Electric. They're yeah, cutting they're for, yeah. for Hydric Electric. So they're available, they're around. And they're on contract, I assume, to a degree. I don't know what their contract is, but. Um, yeah, he he used to do the work for the town of Woodbury and he was so busy last year that he couldn't. 
So we hired this guy from Casper. Okay. He done an excellent job. So. Yeah. Well, it sounds great to me. I would love to have someone come out and get it done. Yeah. Well, they're going to end up being a problem. I'm just. Yep. Yep. They're going to be blocking the road here some afternoon, and that's going to be the end of that. But. Yep. Um, all right. So. I'll get a hold of the tree warden and meet with him and. Um, hard to hard collect, right? Okay. All right. And Steve Gray, I called him about the snow machine trail <clears throat> on the Cabot Road. Mm -hmm. They've got some ideas in in the works, but nothing nothing they can nail down. They've been talking to Wayne Prescott, and I'm sorry, Chris, I didn't get back to you after I talked to him. Um, I guess I don't know why I didn't. I just plain forgot it, I guess. Um, I never forget anything. <laughs> they, uh, uh, they're working on two or three different scenarios about getting the snow machines off the cabin road. So um, I'm waiting to hear back from him on that. And they also want some fill up off in Sand Hill Road for snow machine that uh, trail are changing up there. And one side is gonna come up quite a lot. They gotta put a culvert in a brook. And, uh, and I told them when they were ready to do it, got this everything ducks in a row that we would find them some fill from ditching and stuff and take it up to them. Um, Sounds great. Sounds great. Thanks, Charles. Sounds good. Yeah, excellent. Um, Ron Wells was complaining about the ditching on Valley Lake Road, but after seeing Badger's lawn, I guess I can see why. So I haven't had anything to say to him about that, but um, I guess one of the last things is a trail by the skating rink. You want to talk about that now, or you want to do that? Yeah, later? we could. We yeah. could. Um, just um, while we're talking about, I got a call from Ron Wells too. I didn't speak with him personally. There was a message on my machine, and I've been meaning to send him an email. He was complaining about the deepness of the ditches, and I just wanted to let him know that we're basically that those that are the standards now with the municipal roads general permit. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm planning on sending him an email, just responding to his phone message that I received. Um, he didn't, and, he hasn't said anything to me. Of course, Ron and I don't get along real good anyway, but um, uh -huh. yeah, he was after, he was after Greg and I think it was Peter. Might've been, might've been Tim. I don't remember. There's two of them working there and he got after them about it. Yeah. I said, well, if he says anything else, have him call me. I mean, we're doing it by state SPACs. Right. But then after I, looked at Badger's lawn up there. I I guess if we tore the edge of that lawn out of his and Diana's or whoever it is that I'd be upset too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm assuming that you aren't gonna go that far up to uh, Diana and Ron's house. It's only two units, 600 feet. And yeah. that was Badger's driveway. Yeah, so, okay, that's what, I, that's, what I'm, uh, that's what I was assuming too. Yeah. So I was going to yeah. tell him that they won't be up there, so he doesn't have to worry about his his lawn or ditch. That was one of his concerns that he expressed in the phone message to me. Not not yet. Not yet. Well, it was done a couple of years ago, so it really it's at the top of the crest <laughs> of the hill. It doesn't really need any more than what's what's already there. Um, well. So. That's a difference of opinion. It it's should have had okay. more, All right. a different diameter of, of, of ditch, and it actually doesn't confirm, comply to what we need for the gradient. Right. So that one, when it was point, done, it has to be revisited, and we'll have to have that conversation with. with yeah, them. when it was done, it was left so that it was undercut. The mm -hmm. sod comes right out over the ditch, and mm -hmm. that should be cleaned up made decent 
I mean, the, you go up there now and the grass is two foot tall on the edge of the road there where it should be the edge of their lawn. I would even welcome big stone rather than having to look at that myself. But uh, there, it's not going to be too far into the future. Something's going to have to happen there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I agree. Well, he won't be happy about it. I can tell you that. Well, I, we'll have to we'll start to butter him up now. Right. Because it's going to have to happen to save the road. You know, mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah, but on the other hand, there's only so much buttering you can do. Right. <laughs> Not everybody's going to be your friend. <laughs> That's it. And they don't have to be. I don't nope. care. <laughs> I mean, uh, be right back. I won't overstep my bounds, but I'll be right there. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, Chuck, um, are you willing to go up with with Greg and talk to Chris Davison once the crusher is up in the quarry? Yes. Okay. Because he offered to have you guys up, and well, we yeah, have a quote, we and we'll talk, today. we'll talk about this. But we have a quote for for crushing costs, which um, we'll talk about. But if you're willing to go up there with Greg and make sure that you get the size fractions that you want. Because yep. we never talked about some of the larger size fractions that Greg mentioned when we were out briefly chatting with right. with, with folks on the road. Um, that could be uh, really helpful. Make sure we get what we need. Yeah, yeah, we can do that anytime. Um, is he up there now? Uh, I think they're going to be up there in the next week or so, but I don't have okay. a, a firm. Right. I'll let you know right. as soon as we have one. And so, yeah. hopefully, hopefully Chris will get us, I mean, get us all involved, but I mean, the two people who I really want there the most are you and Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, just let me know anytime and okay. we'll get together and go up. Fair enough. So I had a concern about the proposal from McDonald. Um, oh, yes, please. When I did up the math for how much this would cost the town, um, I mean, I agree it's a good deal, but the it's two hundred and seventy-six thousand mm -hmm. dollars, according to my calculator. Mm -hmm. um, I had I had two hundred seventy-eight. Okay, so my math wrong, I guess. Uh, well, my math could be wrong too. Um, so I'm just a little. I'm not really sure where we're going to get the money for that, unless we take out some kind of loan. Well, the question: is, What are we spending on? Because because one of the thoughts is you could. I don't know what a, what a five-year loan looks like with that, um, with what we're spending on stone. Uh. I think we have budget, you know, I, this is just memory. I'd have to look at um, financials, which we, which I don't have. We didn't get any this week, um, but I think we budgeted about $30,000 a year for gravel. And then um, 35,000 this year, we bumped 35,000. Okay. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what we have budgeted um, for the next fiscal year. Right. Not, the only way you could do that is is uh, would have to borrow against what your future lack of purchasing, if you get what I'm saying. Right. I just don't know what that stone number is. So I think what we would have to do is figure out, OK, so if we do this, we're going to have to take out a loan. We're going to be paying interest on the loan with the interest, you know, and compare um, apples to oranges. So if we just continue to buy stone from local quarries, without and within a yearly budget and not paying interest, you know, which is going to be the least expensive in the long mm. run for the town. I think we, mm. we, need to we need to figure that out before we make any commitment on this. Um, so um, at least that's, that's my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we, we can only borrow for five years without having to go to the voters realistically. Right. So whatever we borrow would have to be in a five year note. And we just need to know what those numbers. So what I need to know is the what we're spending on stone now, and can that translate into a loan to replace that? And it doesn't make sense to do that. My guess is it may, because mm -hmm. interest rates are pretty low. Um, yeah. But I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, just well, it's just the ideal time to do it. Yes, the fact that the crushing costs are low. Right. right. I just but, want us to make an informed decision. 
Yeah, um, I want to I, I want to see the numbers and so compare the I, numbers with what Michael, we would, would pay. You, would you? I guess I can look this up. So I'll look up what our our costs are. Um, yep. We have no. We will have no trucking costs. Right. Right. We'll have no storage costs. Mm -hmm. We'll have no overhead costs. Correct. And we have raw stone available. Right. right. I think it's a good deal. It just can we make make the borrowing work within our budget that we have. I think I think we need to figure that out. One other thing that you ought to keep in the back of your mind is we're not gaining on resurfacing at all at 35,000. We're doing a little bit of resurfacing here and there, but it's short, short spurts. These roads mm -hmm. all need back. back. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I, it seems to me like that if you could get it, put whatever you had to put up and, and, uh, in my opinion, borrowing money on stone and gravel is way more feasible than buying uh, borrowing money on truck. Yes. Yeah, and I just want us to have the figures so that if somebody challenges us on this thinking, mm -hmm. or you know, we need we need to have the information for you know yearly costs buying it from local quarries versus you know going going with this deal. I think I just. <laughs> I just want us to have all of the figures so that um, it's kind of a clear informed uh, decision that we would make. I have I have nothing against this at all. I think it is a good deal, but um, you know when I when I added up the costs. Yeah, we're borrowing set by buying several years worth of material at once. Yeah, yeah. So we I just want to try to you know have us have all of the figures so if somebody wants to challenge us on this we can show them this is the reason that we're doing this and, and have the numbers there to to show mm -hmm. that this is the best decision to make um michael i'm willing, yeah. to, I'm willing to run the numbers if you if, if there's something outside of the town report that i should be looking at would you send that to me please yeah i would check in with the road crew what are they paying right now for a stone yeah, um, can i have can i have some sense of how that's working because well, I'll, I'll try to do this out for a five-year stretch and see yeah i think greg doing. and chuck could do that and then and then you know the the trucking part is um you know that's kind of maybe just having chuck and greg sort of figure out well what is it you know, how many miles to mcdonald's or any of the other quarries that they go to um you know just kind of come up with a, a ballpark figure of, of town expense for that um for each each truckload on the cabot on the cabot road from bickford's it was an hour and 10 minutes of load round track okay yeah and oh you're pulling out of the you're pulling out of the marshfield quarry at, from bickford's we have been yes yeah when yeah, they, they when they get stoned from other places yeah right now. that's they're a paying, long we're paying, i'm telling you we're paying 14 dollars a yard over there too Plus yeah. your trucking your trucking cost gotta be a hundred dollars an hour at least, wouldn't you say, Chuck? I figured it at 90. No, okay, I figured it was pretty close, yeah. Okay. Well, that's what they're getting for 10 wheelers through yep. pikes right now. So it's, it's 90. I was pretty close then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, so just having those up. figures, you know, kind yeah, of figuring that run, out. We these numbers. We need to run yeah. them in steep. Yeah. Because yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah it's, I understand it's, that. It is an investment in our future. There's no yeah. question about that. I agree. But we can, but we can decide exactly what fractions we want. We can have exactly the kind of stone that we want. Mm -hmm. They're going to mm -hmm. make it for us, and they're going to have it on site. We're we're going to have you know at least four or five years worth of not dealing with this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I have I have no objections to going forward with this deal. I just want us to have all of the numbers so that that it's pretty clear to the rest of people in town. Yep. that this was a good deal. I, I want to make sure Brandy, Brandy should work out what the borrowing costs would be. Yeah. For we what usually, the 278. We have traditionally borrowed from the Union Bank, um, which we have most of our dealings with, um, all of our dealings with, I think. And they usually give us a pretty good rate. Um, so I, I'm sure she'll check in with the, the people there. And um, probably at our next uh, select board meeting, she could have figures on um, you know the the loan the five year loan the interest rates so we could would have a clear right sense of what that figure would be um, 
Because I think if we get all those numbers together, I think I think it's going to be a positive thing and we'll be able to move forward with, with the information we have. Yeah, I, I feel it will be, too. I just want to have all those numbers. Oh, I agree so with you. Yeah. When we're challenged, you know, we, we can show that yep. the numbers and, and the reasoning for why we are choosing to do this. Um, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, I agree. Because it's, it's, it's a big chunk of money, and somebody's going to want to know, why are we doing this? Yep. I'm sure. I'll bet there would be more than one somebody. Right. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I think where you're coming from the there. Gonna prove us out. The math is going to prove us out pretty fast. Yeah, I, so. So. I agree, but I want we just should yeah. have those numbers. We will. It, yep, agreed. The availability of being able to get it 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you need to. I mean, that's a big deal, too. Yeah. When it comes to big time, you know, there's a lot of days that they, and I'm sure they'd bitch and we'd have to get the whip out, but they shouldn't be working Saturdays and Sundays during these roads up. And in that case, they'd be able to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, there's a lot of pluses. I agree. In fact, they're all they're pluses, at. really. Uh, no. It's just, yeah. it's, it's convincing people that an investment in the future is worthwhile. Yeah, it's like Chuck said, we borrow money about with the trucks and nobody complains about it. So mm -hmm. I think this is similar to that in my mind. Well, just the savings in the crushing is more than going to pay the interest. Um, yes. Would you say, Chris? I would. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the reduced crushing costs and the fact that the stone is all free. Yeah. I mean, and no, I mean, no we, I, I, would, I would say that we should buy this for, for as long as we possibly could. No. <laughs> but we, we owe you know because this is going to be local and it's going to be cheap and we're paying only crushing costs mm -hmm. right. this whole thing makes a lot of sense to me but yes, i agree does. with michael we have yeah, to yeah it, it makes total sense you know, once we do the numbers you know, it'll pay have no objections at all i just want to i want to have those yeah. numbers there for what we're challenged we have to we have to, we have because to because otherwise we'd be killed <laughs> it's a big chunk of money a big chunk of money it's, it's a big chunk of money which i understand yeah. But it's a, it's everything that we need and actually have needed for a bit. Yep. Right? Because we yeah, have a lot of resources. Uh, yep. You know, the, mm -hmm. we should be resurfacing a couple of stretches of three miles a year here. And we're putting band aids on them and putting three inches on them when we ought to be putting six on. And, you mm -hmm. know, we're getting by and the roads are. The roads in good shape. I've heard a lot of comments about how good the roads are right now, and which is good. But mm -hmm. the better, the more gravel you have on them, and the better the gravel is, the less maintenance there is to do to them. I mean, there's mm -hmm. even going to be a savings in the in the honing and the cleaning the ditches and the culverts and stuff when we get them up to where they ought to be. Mm -hmm. Right, it's going to stabilize the roads considerably. Mm -hmm. And so there's downstream, there are really good downstream costs that are going to be eliminated mm -hmm. once well, the roads are stabilized with, with, a good, yes. with a good gravel yeah. base there. So, yeah. No, I think we're all convinced this is the right idea. We just, um, you got to do so, the numbers. <laughs> yeah, just got to do the numbers. Do the Them knots is dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, there, there, there is one other road thing. Um, I've, I've um, talked to Chuck about this a little bit and, or maybe we've had email exchanges and I sent some photos out today. There was a complaint that uh, Robin forwarded to me. Um, some folks that live near the school have been seeing um, off-road trucks going across the school property, town property into the town wetland area and then up an old road that comes out on, um, it's, it's ac actually basically a vast trail. Um, so I checked it out over the weekend and there's definitely some major I saw tires, the pictures. Yeah, in the road. Um, so um, I guess what we need to do is try to block that off um, so that those trucks aren't going up there. Um, I, I didn't walk, I walked maybe, I walked pretty much to the end of the town property, um, the wetland property on the road. I didn't go any further to see what it looks like further on. I may do that if I have some time in the near future, but um, 
it, there was some pretty rough spots that I did see. So, um, Greg and walk, I talk. we walk this regularly with the school kids. Yeah, and this is not a new thing. No, all. there have been eight. There's been ATV traffic, but um, I've never seen truck tire. You know, the major ruts like there is right now. Yep. Hey, Mike. Greg and I Nope. Yes, Gary. Uh, I just want to mention uh, a couple nights ago, probably two or three o'clock in the morning, I, I got on camera about a group of five or six UTVs that went by my house headed into headed into Woodbury. Um, they were like razor style uh, four wheelers. Uh -huh. uh, it was about two or three o'clock in the morning. They, they came by here. OK. And th these may have been that type of vehicle. Um, they had to go over the there's a, a snowmobile bridge um, on the town, town property. And that bridge did get broken up a little bit, but I can't really see an off-road uh, truck. I, I can't see it going over that bridge. Um, they must have, they did, broke the edges off. They did broke, break the yeah. edges off, yeah. So they must have, have. Yeah. So it must have been, because um, I would think the span on a truck would be even wider than that bridge. Um, yeah, well, these these were uh, these were just a, basically a larger version of a four wheeler, just you know, like, yeah. like you know, a, a dual like a dual cab four wheeler. Yeah, they're the. Um, I've seen them go up through there. I didn't see them yeah. go into the road, but I've seen them going up and down Valley Lake. Oh, yeah, they, they went they, somewhere they, and then came back. Yeah, they came right off the side road here by my house and headed right down 14 at like it's like yeah. two thirty or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because that, that's when this person has been seeing them go past their house um, on town property. It's like mentioned like 11 p.m. And if they are going all the way through um, over onto Grady and Sheila Neal's land, um, then they would have been coming right down Foster Hill Road once they yeah. came out. Um, the, where They would have to come right through Grady and Sheila's dyad though, right down by the mill pond. Well, the trail, you can, um, actually, you can go down um, and come out on Jeff Weiss's, Jeff Weiss's property. Oh, yes. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I haven't looked for the, you know, truck tire or tire tracks over there. Um, well, Greg and I were talking about it today, and um, just beyond the skating rink is a bunch of trees and it narrows right up there mm -hmm. and we talked about it and come up with the idea maybe we we've got some telephone poles over there on mm -hmm. the corner of Dock Pond and mm -hmm. Tibbetts Hill and maybe we should set a couple of those and we priced a gate just a one of them galvanized gates 12 foot yeah. from tractor supply the gate and the hardware to make it you know the hinges and stuff Mm -hmm. It's 125 bucks. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> we weren't low enough to miss that bridge. Now, huh. do we have to get down? So if they come across that bridge, we can oh. walk them off. The, the new bridge by Brian Shop. Well, I I haven't seen it, but that that's a bridge you're talking about right that they you think they went across and broke the edges no off? no th this one is further up um on this on the school and town wetland area oh, um okay. there's a small right, brook so there that that, that would work good then right yeah. there but it's probably 50 feet beyond the skating rink yeah and, and I, I, there's a bunch of big trees that come in on both sides and we can mm -hmm. narrow it up right I mean, even if we Perfect. had to put a block or something. Yeah, and then maybe uh, some kind of signage that, that just to tell people, you know, off-road vehicles that they aren't allowed. Um, I did talk to Steve Gray about this also, and um, he mentioned that they could put up some type of gate on that new bridge uh, once it's completed. It's not finished yet. They're probably going to have to to keep people out of there. Yeah. I'm guessing that's about the only way you're going to do it. Yeah. And he'll, but, I haven't told him yet that the snowmobile bridge that goes across that brook is somewhat damaged. A snowmobile could still use it, but um, yeah, it, it, it's, it did get damaged some. Um, all right. Yeah, so, I would say let's do it. Um, all right. Yeah. Agreed. 
the the excavator sitting right there, so I'll get a gate and we'll get it done this week. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, Much appreciated. No problem. I had one question that had been asked, and uh, you, uh, when the excavators right in the village there, can they go over between the post office and the fire station, just dress that? area the plows tore up up a little bit the mowing guy was over there and couldn't get in there where that old tree was is that where you're talking yeah well to the left toward the post office there's some big big uh tufts of grass and things that got dug up with the plow and the loader yeah i'll look at it tomorrow uh, yeah, and we'll i don't think it would take it. a whole lot just to dress it up so it could grow grass and then they can mow it but we'll probably have to i think our trailer might be sitting there but timmy can move that well yeah, yeah. Or I can somebody. Yeah, can. it's uh, easy to move. It's yeah, yeah. I'll look at it tomorrow. Yeah, just well, since uh, they're right there, I don't think it'd be a whole lot of work to clean that up because the mowing guy was uh, going to mow it, and then then Roy was going to mow it, but it was so bumpy it couldn't get a mower on it. Yeah, well, even if it takes a few minutes, we, it ain't no big deal. We'll do it. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um. Any, I guess that's all I got today. Okay. Any any other questions for Chuck? I'm good. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. No problem. No okay. problem. Thank right. you, guys. Um, so next on the agenda is to take a look at the um, the job descriptions for a road crew member and um, for road foreman. I can bring those up on the screen if you'd like, um, or if we yeah, have. Yeah, probably I've got it on this screen, but I haven't got it on this screen. Okay, I've got some paper copies in front of me, but um, do you want me to? Br I can bring it up on the screen. Shall I do that? Yeah, I think then we're all looking at the same thing. Okay, uh, hang on a second. Because I was, we're probably looking at a road uh, highway worker one and two, right? And two, yes. Yeah, road crew one and two. Oh, wait a minute. I got to do the share screen thing here. Uh-oh. Broke so, it? No. Um, Leaf, if you're there, can you make me a co-host? Yes, I'm here. I can make you a co-host. Thank yep. you, sir. Appreciate it. No problem. Okay, so, all right. So bear with me while I get this. We've also, I think I sent you guys the, uh, the road crew CDL application that someone made a fillable application that we could use. And I don't know if this one still works or something else we should look at as part of this. Tip of the day. Okay, here we go. Whoops, don't want to do that. So let me figure out how I can make this thing move here. Um, gotta get. That uh, didn't work. All right, I'm just going to eliminate that. Okay, here we go. So, um, how do we want to discuss this? Would you, do we just want to look at the items and see if there's anything missing or things that we want to change? So, what I, I didn't have a big problem with it. Chuck knows more about the technical side of it. I know. Some of the things we're lacking in our current folks is a little bit of technical ability to deal with the computer side of it, which I think should be right. on here. Yeah, uh, familiarity with with some of the computer because uh, the need to be able to do your timesheet and to enter logs and things like that. I and mean, that's not on here. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to deal with grant app, not being the grant writer, but at least be able to enter the work into something. Yeah. So I don't know what the sentence to write to make 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 that make sense, but that way not one of us we're not having to hire another person to document things. 
Right. Sort of like what I do now, you mean? Yeah, I mean, the idea would have the employee just simply take care of the entry of their own work stuff, you know. Oh, okay, all right. Like the so I'm, not, I'm not talking a computer expert. I'm talking just uh, illiterate with the computer enough to enter your timesheet, to enter the truck work logs, the workday work logs that are online yeah. or on the computer. Michael, the only question that I had was, oh, oh, are you, are you still there? Okay, he's there. Yeah, sorry, Michael. The only yeah, question I'm I here is, um, you know, some of our some of our assessments of our road assessments require us to be using this digital template. Right? Yeah, and we've, I think you and I have been, and I think Chuck was there for, for some of them as well. Um, you know, they have to be able to, to manipulate that so that we can classify roads. And I didn't know if that was too specific or if that was, you know, something that we could say, be willing to be trained in, you know, this type of, of software template, because that's pretty much what they're taking these days. No one, no one's going out with a field book anymore in a transit. No. Um, that worked on. Everybody's and I think we're thinking right along the same lines, Chris, it's just that that stuff there, day to day aware. stuff that's now computerized. Yeah, an aware an awareness of of the of, of that as a as as a feature of the job in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been doing, you know, as far as the grant documenting and, and I haven't I've been trying to learn how to do this um, uh, recording of roads, especially for the municipal roads general permit, which ones now meet the requirements, et cetera. And um, I have yet to learn that myself. You know, I know how to use a computer a little bit, but I am an old timer and uh, a lot of this stuff is kind of new to me. So um, yeah, so that's definitely, we're definitely lacking that right at the moment um, for all of the recording of the work that's been done. Because really the best place to document is the person doing it at the end of the day, puts it in whatever system we have. It, it would be nice if that could be done. Yes, I agree. Or the truck logs, things like right. that. And I know we're having struggles with the timesheets now. So I think it's fair question. If someone's completely illiterate on the computer or writing and whatnot, we either got to get them some help on that or hire somebody that yeah. has at least basic skills or we at least trainable, willing to be trained. Because what I don't want is yeah. someone to say, I ain't touching the damn computer. You know, that's not going to fly exactly. with me. Yeah. So basic skills. So basic skills on a computer that, um, and, you know, basically that to be able to record um, or log yeah. their, their own work. Yeah. Truck, truck worksheets, time worksheets. Yeah. Truck truck work and maintenance sheets. There, yeah. I, have a, I have a collection of paper maintenance sheets that are building up right. that Laura Daly used to record. Right, so this is exactly what I said. We've been trying for a long time to get the actual workers entering this stuff. Yeah. And then, um, so I'm gonna put reporting on, um, I'll put reporting to state. You know, so something with basic basic computer skills, be able to work, yep. you know, operate a Word document, I op operate type type of timesheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a willingness to learn the other things that need to be Correct. done. Yeah. And okay. I think we can, but if we have some sentence on there, I think it addresses all those things. We can ask more specific questions during an interview. Yeah. And we'll just make it clear to folks that saying we're not going to touch the computer is not going to be not going to be a good thing for you. Right. I agree with Paul. I mean, I think that we just have to make sure that people understand if they're applying. You you will be learning this. Literacy, right. Just general computer literacy. Yeah. Is, and we'll 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 find a we'll way train. to train you. Yep. We'll train yeah. you and we'll get you we'll get you right. But you have yep. to be willing to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But other than that, the technical side, I'd have to lean on Chuck if he thinks the things on there are good enough uh, to get what he's looking for. They look good to me. I was going over them the other day there and, you know, it looks, I think you're headed down the right road. Okay. 
So I can make, um, I can add this one change. I'll, I'll just, um, I'll make that change with, for the computer skills, um, you know, work on the wording a little bit and then send that uh, a copy of this out to you guys. Yes. Yeah, because that's just the one fix. I think the rest of it looked okay to me. Okay. I, I agree with Paul. I have, I think that you did a terrific job, Michael. Getting well, this. actually, uh, Skip Lindsay originally put this Skip together. Skip did this one. <laughs> We're not going to take credit. No. All right. Well, I appreciate what Skip did. I, I do too. Yeah. So, so you also have that fillable form, Mike, that we could use as the application. Do we feel that that's uh, adequate? Um, I haven't looked at that. I saw that um, that you had sent that in an email, but I, I didn't look at it because I just figured it was for a CDL license. I, um, yeah, but, it's, yeah, it's, it's a. It basically, you, I think it says CDL employment, meaning you have to have a CDL to, to apply. That is that is definitely required, yeah. So what it says is you're, I think it's a good one. Um, I kind of like it because it's fillable online. So if we sent that out, so if yeah. we're going to, I don't know if we're going to want to get this out before the next meeting, uh, we could review that uh, for to be looked at, or do we want to get this rolling and just send this application out? Um, let's, let's get, let's a look. I think, um, why don't we wait till our next meeting, which is, I guess it's three weeks away though, isn't it? Right. Cause we were trying to get this out, out in June. Okay. So, um, let me make the one change to the job description. Um, and I'll send that out. And, um, if we're all okay with it, the way it's written, um, we can proceed to to post yeah. or get this out. Yeah, and in the interim, if, if you both if you haven't looked at that online application, just take a look. And if you think it's okay, we'll just send that with this. If people want it, we'll email the stuff to them, and that way we'd receive this all type typewritten. Okay. Yeah. That's so, even oh, a good precursor. If you can't fill out the application, maybe you need a different job. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so maybe you don't need one here. Did. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Paul, I did look at it, and I think it actually is perfectly fine. It's a okay. very good application. So, so if okay. Chris is good and I'm good, if you agree, Mike, then we would just review your your yeah. upgrade, and then we'll get and this we'll thing that advertised. And we'll then we'll get it out. Is a link, right? Yeah. We'll put that link in to the application, and so they have this, and they have yep. that link. Well, someone will. I don't know if I know how to do it. I can probably figure Yes, I can do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, we just cut, we cut and paste it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's a nice form, you can type it, type right into it online, save it, and send it as an attachment. And then we'd be able to read what's on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Skip did that application yeah. too. So. Plus, it's a good measure if someone has just some basic computer literacy skills. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, I think the LCT has a a job posting um, site. They do. Um, so so I think we can post it there and then send it to the Gazette and maybe the Times Argus. Yeah. And put it on our website for on the website. Yeah. Post it on the board. Yeah, yep. it can go out on front porch forum and it could go out mm -hmm. on maybe Gary put it on his his site too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm pretty comfortable with that if Chuck is. Yeah. Yeah. I I think you'd head it right down the right road. Okay. And then we'll kind of pick through. If we have a great day, we'll have 20 or 30 uh, wonderful applicants that we can select a few to interview. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like the way you're dreaming. Yeah, I know. The, uh, my problem is in my on my work world, everybody's got the sign out. Nobody's applying. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, we may find that. So, yeah. Well, we've got pretty good pay and benefits. So I'm hopefully we'll get get a right. good, good selection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could go the other way too, and we could be swamped, which would yep. be a bad thing, which just makes more work for us. Yeah, so, which would be a good thing because, again, we're wanting to set the tone for this new person to understand that in a few years they might actually be running the show here. So mm -hmm. they need to be able to do that. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, anything more at all for with that? I'm good with it. All right. Okay. So let's move on to. Um, just discussing the, this proposal from the Hardwick Police Department. Um, sure, I'll open up with it. So it's really not a hard proposal yet. I was approached by uh, Lieutenant Leo from the Hardwick PD um, and, and they were wondering if we would be interested in hiring them 
to do our traffic enforcement like we do with the Washington County Sheriff. Um, Cause he's noting, he looked at our budget and realized we're budgeting 10 K or so we're only spending about five. Um, Cause we're not getting the time. That's been a frustration we've had to share with uh, a lot of people that were complaining why we weren't doing speed enforcement. So I, I said I would bring it to our attention. And I think if, if you guys think it's a good idea at the next meeting, I'll invite uh, Lieutenant Leo in to talk about it. I mean, his, I sent you a copy of what the Orleans Sheriff did with Glover. He's proposing something like that, two to three hours a week um, of regular patrols. Um, things like, I don't want to speak for him about all this, but it was somewhere a number around 15,000 they were looking for. I think we're spending around 10 now. If I, think we, cool. I think we're budgeting. Um, and again, I, my memory may not be. I'm correct, going by memory too. So it's dangerous. I think we dropped it back to like 7,000 a year yeah. because we weren't getting the hours that we right. had originally requested and budgeted yeah. for. Um, so I think it's a worthwhile conversation to have because one of the problems with the sheriff's office is they're 20 miles away, 25 miles away. We're paying that time and mileage, whereas Hardwick drives across the line and they're here. Um, yeah. I know for us, they uh, as part of this deal, I'd like to see them willing to come with fire and rescue when we have overdoses. And we just had a car accident Saturday morning where someone was uh, potentially uh, intoxicated and we're having to, luckily Hardwick PD was followed the ambulance right up so we didn't have to deal with it ourselves but that's been a common problem so right. you know that's that's something i think we could attach into this that would be really helpful for the safety of our responders yeah. that was my we're, question paul i was wondering if this could be more than just traffic stops that yeah. it, it would need to be in my mind because we're having a serious problem uh that i don't even want to say it because it's, it's bad luck but we we've slowed down on the overdoses but well, the reality uh, overdoses have been very dangerous in the last two years. Uh, yep. There's been guns involved and violence and threats. And, you know, it's getting to the point where without police protection, we're almost not willing to go to them. Mm -hmm. I had a fellow last uh, uh, summer uh, when, when I woke him up, he put his car in reverse and backed down Maple Road at 50 miles an hour and almost hit one of my people coming up the other way. So um, we really I, I think we need to do something like this. Um, and see well, how it works. It's not going to be a big cost item for us, um, but I think it could be a big positive. I think yeah, the first thing is that if we if if we potentially have this as an option, they at least show up. Yeah, yeah, because they've come up uh, four or five times for nothing in the last year. Washington County Sheriff's Office typically has not been showing up. Nope. They they so, really don't do um, that type of enforcement. Um, nope. And they're just they're traffic a, and serving, uh, um, serving and warrants and stuff. That's yeah. all. That's what they well, really do. Um, I, I agree with Paul in every way because we have that we would have a, a much more local enforcement agency that we could <laughs> so we could rely on, and then you know, and they would also show up. <laughs> and it's so, not a big change from what we're doing now. And, and mostly they're going to just be doing a traffic patrol, but we'd have the option of. I would want to negotiate with them to say, you will come up if we request for an overdose or car accident, thing like that. And if we've been at 15 before and, you know, and we. I, I think the number might have been 10 before. So we're going to. We've never, up. we've never been at 15. Right. Um, I know when we, we did. I have to look back. We, I'm sorry. I, yeah, we did request more hours uh, five or, well, I don't know how many years ago, four or yeah. five years ago, maybe six years ago. Um, just. Um, I think mostly when we were dealing with a lot of speeding around Woodbury Lake and in other parts right. of town, um, and they've never been able, they have a shortage of deputies, right. so they've never been able to honor that. And, um, and so, you know, we did drop it back down. Um, so so what look. I, yeah, what I can do is I can talk to Lieutenant Leo and if we want to put him on the agenda for next meeting, I'll see, I'll front load him with kind of what we're looking for and maybe they'll have a proposal for us. I, I would like to, um, yeah, I would definitely want to have him come ne at our next yes. meeting. Um, I know when we did, we did a whole um, kind of uh, research into policing when I was first on the select board. Um, you know, we had the state police come, we had talked to the Hardwick Police Department, et cetera. And because I guess it was after a couple incidents in town mm -hmm. where um, there was some real potential for uh, harm. Um, one, you know, right across the road from me. Um, and I was, well, we had the double homicide fire where right. there was gunfire and everything before we got there. 
I was, I was going to say, I mean, we've had this and there was no police response. Right. right. We, we've been right in the front lines of this right. thing. I mean, that's. Yeah. And if there is police response, it usually, you know, like state police response. Um, it's this 45 minutes to an hour usually. Yeah. It's usually in an hour, 45 minutes to an hour before. Yeah. Um, there's no way they're going to get here. And you know, we've had, that, we've had, I've been assaulted. Dana's been assaulted. Um, we've had to throw down with people before just to keep our members safe. So, yeah. So, and if Hardwick is willing to, to also. Yeah. So that's what I want to see what exactly that looks like. Cause I, I know the answer in the past to do a big contract has been, no, nobody wants to do that. This is sort of yeah. uh, doing what we're doing, maybe enhanced just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I know when we asked them for what it would cost for, for us to have policing coverage, Sort of like Greensboro had with them. They the price tag was one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Yes, that's right. And I think that's a non. We've been down that road, but I think, yeah, I think this that, can be a, was, a middle. That, that yeah. was a non. That was a non-starter, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. We can't do that, but yeah. we can have something similar with a much shorter response time. Yeah, yeah. and and a little enhancement to it. And maybe. A little, right. That's yeah. what I'm going to kind of love. We're looking for the traffic, like you kind of suggested, but we also were, you know, if the fast squads headed out. Were you willing to run up for an overdose or a, mm -hmm. we got a belligerent drunk or belligerent or something like that? Potentially dangerous situation. Yeah. Because yeah. um, it's frustrating. I had, a, I had a shooting a year or so ago and we had to stand outside the house for 45 minutes for police to arrive before we could go in and help the person. So, yeah. 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 I would, you know, if we could make this work, I would, I would love to have that. It's been a, it's been a perennial. Yeah problem or lack of lack of any kind of um proper uh, yeah. enforcement and, and anecdotally after uh after the double homicide incident in 2018 we had a much higher state police presence in town they were patrolling quite a bit in fact i saw a trooper go by my house at least once a week but that stopped again because they're busy and i'm not placing any blame but but the net result of that was a lot lower uh ish, issues in town Right. You, you know, know and, that, and they I, just go somewhere else. Yeah, but, when I talked but, to the but, state but, police but, about that, they but, mentioned that, you know, that they cover, they're actually short. Um, yeah, they're short. They cover a lot of ground. So I'm certainly yeah. not picking on them. They're, no. they're trying to do a lot with a little. Yeah. And it's basically, you know, what the state gives them for a budget. Yeah. Much. So they're, they're that's, what I was told. that's what I was told anyway. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Let's, let, let's have him um, come to our next meeting. Um, yep, I'll see and uh, I'll 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 email you both uh, if I'm successful in setting that okay. up. If not, we'll get it for a future meeting. Yep, and if yeah, if it's not the next one, then sometime right. soon. Yep. No. Okay. Um, so, looks like um, we can move on to the personnel policy, or we could do the updates and stuff first, um, and and put the personnel policy off for as long as we can. <laughs> <laughs> um let's just rip the scab off okay yep, all right okay here we go so um i can screen share this thing if you'd like yes, please. so hang on i gotta get out of this one uh let's see all right and then we'll do it again um Whoops. Okay, I guess I got to get rid of this. And let's see, there it is. Open that one up. Okay, that was easy. Oh, come on, go away. <laughs> this is Microsoft trying to harass me. Go away. Um, I don't want to sign in and I don't want to create an account. Uh, all right, figured it out. Okay, so um, let me get my, I work on these things much better with a paper copy. So I've got a paper copy and I've got some parts that I wanted to point out to us. Um, so I don't know if, how much time you've had to look at the, the, um, the model policy, but there's a lot of 
kind of explaining of things and then there's the actual policies. Um, so, so there's a lot of guidance with it also, which of course will eliminate eventually. Um, so let's see, I guess I'm gonna go slow here. All right. So here, whoops. Yeah, right at the bottom. So I'm wondering in the definition of a full-time employee, um, you know, I put 30 hours. That's basically any employee that works more than 30 hours, technically they're eligible for benefits. Um, we could keep, we could have it if, so I put 30 hours in there, but I have a question to myself. Should we, um, you know, we're talking about a full-time employee. Should we make that 40 hours instead? And I kind of wanted to get your opinion on that. So Vermont law says 35 hours a week is considered a full-time employee. Okay. So we might want to just be in keeping with that. So put it at 35. Yeah, I'm just looking at Vermont law here. Okay. All right. That sounds good. So I'll make that uh, change. The U.S. Department of Labor defines as 35 hours per week. So if they work less than that, they're considered part-time. They work more than 35, they're considered full-time. Okay. So I can't make the change right now because I only... That's fine. I have view only, but I wrote a note for that. That does can, that, that will mean that that our town treasurer is not going to get benefits. Um, the town treasurer, the town clerk, basically they don't get benefits in the personnel policy. We can establish that, but that's a whole separate um, agreement that we would have with them. Which and I think that we're going to have to consider. Maybe it's not part of this policy. Well, scratch it off, Mike. Right. No, we would, yeah, we're definitely going to consider that. We have always offered that to them, but this personnel policy is basically for employees only. So, um, so I got into Vermont law. I'm in the statute. I was looking at federal yeah. law. The Vermont law is 30 hours, so I misspoke. Okay. okay, you want to keep it at 30 then? Yeah. Right. So, Chris, to address your point, um, we will have a whole separate policy separate policy for the town clerk and the town treasurer. And according to VLCT, if they would like to receive benefits, they have to sign an agreement. And there's a model agreement in this, um, the VLCT policy. So that's, that's uh, the plan for the town clerk and the town treasurer. Um, and I think, you know, what I'd like us to do is get this thing completed. Um, so that we have something to present when we're looking for a new road crew member that's that's finished. And um, and then we'll just keep right in step and create um, the policy for the uh, town clerk and town treasurer. No, Michael, I have no problem with that at all. Okay. And I did see that. I just wanted to make the point. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so let's see, I'm just gonna kind of, slowly move through this. So this is all kind of standard and, and we have this in the policy um, pretty much already. And a lot of it is taken directly from this model policy. So here's, um, so hours of service, I basically just typed in what we're, what's happening right at the moment. Um, I crossed out some of this text that was suggested, um, highlighted in red and crossed it out. Um, and this is basically from, you know, from what we're doing now. Um, and I know we've talked about maybe changing this at some point. So, um, you know, they had a second paragraph that states regular work hours may be changed, um, blah, blah, blah. So I think that kind of covers us covers okay. us if, they, if we do want to make changes. Right, because it sets the schedule and then it, if they want to request a change in that schedule it would have to be approved. Right, or if we okay. want to make a, if we, yeah, they would have to, we would have to approve it. And if they, if we want to make a change, we have the right to do that. Um, so that's, okay, let's see. 
So these are all pretty standard things which are in our policy. There, some of them aren't missing. I don't think there's anything about political activity or nepotism. Um, alcohol and drug use is definitely in there. Um, and, and then there's a whole booklet on um, how to deal with um, substance abuse problems mm -hmm. with employees. Um, okay, uh, tobacco use. One of the things that we, um, I've noticed in the past is, uh, it's pretty much <coughs> just with one employee, but it says uh, no tobacco use in, in any of the town vehicles. Um, I know that that's yeah, so we got to enforce that inside the garage and the vehicles because if we could get another employee complain. Yeah. yeah, so that's something that I guess we should probably address to the road crew at some point. And that's in our current policy as it is. And it's state law. And it's state law, exactly, yeah. So this is all, all of this is in our- Yeah, I was gonna say in response to Paul, it's already state law. Yeah. What? To, there's there's no difficulty in conforming to the fact that we have to we have no, to follow the law. No, I agree. Um, yeah, it's just how much you're willing to to um, see, but not make an issue of. Yeah, basically. yeah. So we're gonna if, if we see that we're gonna have to be addressing it, mm -hmm. yeah. which is fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is fair. No, I mean that that part's fair, mm -hmm. but they have to be aware of it. Otherwise, I, it's not fair. I would right, be surprised. Correct. Yeah, and that's why it's in the personnel policy, and it is in the current personnel policy. Um, so, I mean, so it's on us to make sure that people are aware of it. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, so we'll get this approved, then we'll get it dished out, and Chuck yeah. can make sure they're aware. Yeah, well, a, but a part of a part of this no, personnel no. policy, and I I don't know if we have it in our current one, is that. They basically have to sign a form that they have read the personnel policy and agree to the terms that are in it. So that kind of comes at the end. It's it's not at the end of this model policy. So that computer stuff is all in there, public records. So here's where we um, get into the benefits, which is what we've been focused on most. Um, let's see. So this is all kind of guidance from VLCT. Um, and it does mention somewhere in here, um, elected officials. Um, so, and then this is my beginning to put in what's uh, particular to the town. Um, and then I just basically cut and paste the parts of our, the personnel policy that we've been working on. Um, You know, and I'm leaving in the part-time employees, even though, you know, when we technically, when we hire a third full-time person, we won't have any part-time people, but. We should have it in there because yeah, we could. We could in the future, right. You know, you could have somebody get sick and need to hire somebody for an interim step and have a part-time person, so. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't think there's any reason to actually eliminate that. No, I don't, I don't know, yeah. Um, I think that that should stay in, even if it's not being actively used. Mm -hmm. We'll have yeah. to revisit it in a couple of years anyway, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but so keep it in, what? legacy. Yeah, one of the things I thought I would do under paid leave time is just basically designate all of the different um, leave times that, that we, um, want to see in the policy. As, as you'll notice as we go through this, there are a lot of a lot more of them than what we have um, in the policy. So, um, but the, this is basically what we have right now um, that I just cut and pasted into the model policy. Um, and I thought that, that we do, I believe, we have a paid leave time request form. I know Brandy we do. was- yep. Yep. So I thought we'd have that form as just another appendix within yeah, the- It should be in, in the appendix. Yeah, so that, that's, um, but we'll get that in there eventually. Um, all of this, all of this should be so readily available that it's never a question. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. so any, any, any of the- We don't really have that yet. 
Yeah, I guess no, we don't no. have appendix. They're called annexes now, aren't they? They are. <laughs> yeah. They are. Yeah. Appendix sounds nice too. I, yeah, that's what I'm no. used to. But I notice all my books now have a have an annex. Annex, or as yeah, opposed an to an appendum. Yeah. There's appendum too. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Where it is. I can't even keep up with the words sometimes. Right. <laughs> so holiday leave times, pretty standard. One question I had: um, these are the ones that we offer, um, and. Um, there were a couple others that VLCT had on their list. One of them is what we used to call Columbus Day, and now I think it's called an Indigenous Honor yeah, Day. Yeah, and that's been taken away from the state employees. Has that, that one? Yeah. yeah. And, um, okay, and then there's Bennington Battle Day, which our, our road crew usually kind of works on that day anyway, although- My favorite holiday of the year. Yeah, they could, they could take it off if they want. Um, so I always went down and, and teed off Dan Kuchain at the at the uh, Fisher Auto Parts. I'd walk in and he's, "What's what's this one? It's spending the battle day." My, everybody else had to work except me. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we'll keep these as as they are. I Actually, can I can I can I just ask? Sure. Um, can we just perfectly mirror the state on this? Uh, we could. Yes, we could. In which case, um, why why would we not mirror the state? Well, that's pretty much what we do. The following, I mean, as you okay. can see in the text, I, well, um, uh, I guess I can't. Holidays can't shall be observed on the day that the state observes them, and I don't know yeah. if they have extra. I don't. Um, I'm gonna I don't look here real quick for you, Mike. Okay. So we got New Year's, Martin Luther King, President Day. No, oh, excuse me. Yeah, President's Day. They give town meeting day off. Right. Memorial Day, Independence Day, Bennington Battle Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas. Okay. So the only, the only one I could see meeting. is we'd have to add town meeting if we're going to do that. Uh-huh. Which certainly I think would, is totally reasonable. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, I mean, I really... I feel that town meeting day, everybody should get it off so they can go to town meeting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I agree with Chris. I think we should, that's the state right off the state employee uh, okay. calendar. Oh, exactly what the state calendar does. And then we just don't have to worry about it. Okay. So I'm going to add town meeting day. I've always wanted, I've always felt that that should be there anyway. And then the yeah. other thing that, other thing that we do, um, if you look at the, after the listing of the hol holidays, um, either for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, um, there's an extra day that can be attached to it. So like, you know, traditionally Thanksgiving is on a Thursday and a lot of people like to take Friday off and finish up deer season or whatever. So, so for the state employees, they call that the day after Thanksgiving, which is at the discretion of the administration, but it is a holiday. Okay. Uh, but every year the governor has to say, yes, you can have it off. But I worked, I just retired. I worked there for 33 years and always had it off. Okay. So what, what we say is that um, all full-time and part-time employees shall receive one additional paid floating holiday associated with either okay. Thanksgiving or Christmas, but not perfect. Both. Yep. So, That's okay. perfect. Okay. All right. So we'll, um, whoop, 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 whoop. hang on. So the other one, um, so here's one that was a little confusing to me at first. Um, and it's the part that's highlighted in yellow. Um, so full-time employees will receive holiday pay at their regular rate of pay and may count the holiday hours paid towards hours actually worked when returning, determining overtime compensation. I can and I explain wish, that. Yeah, I wish Brandy was here because I don't think that we do that. Um, okay, because because uh, the the state's pretty specific and hours actually work. So a sick day is not considered hours actually work. So if yeah. I were to take Monday off sick and I working for the state uh, and then get out eight hours of sick time, and then on Tuesday I work twelve hours, uh, the overtime rate would wouldn't apply till I had worked four eight hours. more a full eight hours. So yeah. those four hours would be compensated at straight time. Okay. That prevents someone from work, you know, working overtime, and then the next day they call in sick. Mm -hmm. That's so, so they they but a holiday they've always considered as time actually work. So if you okay. have an eight hour holiday on Monday and then Friday you work two hours overtime, 
you know, work 10 hours and it would be considered overtime. And, and I think that's fair. Okay. All right. It seems yeah, in, in my memory that, um, that Brandy has not let them claim overtime if they had a, you know, had a hall, if there was a holiday in the week, they'd have yeah, to work. That's not them. in keeping with state policy. I I'm, okay. think we should do let them, I mean, a holiday is considered time work. Okay. All right. I, think, and, I, I think we should be ridiculously consistent. Okay. With state policy. Well, I, the LCT I, in their version of the, of the personnel policy, which I include here in the highlighted part, they have holiday leave that is not actually worked by an employee will not be included in calculating overtime for that employee. So that's different from the state. Right, right. that's I, different. So and I'm fine, with key, I'm fine with having it either way. Um, I just wanted us to be aware that there is a what difference. What we were doing. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is why, I mean, so the Vermont League of Cities and Towns does a ton of great stuff for us. Mm -hmm. But I also question whether or not we should just stay as consistent as we can with what the state mandates are what the yeah that's that's our that's our choice we you know mm -hmm. this is a model policy from vlct they're basically up pretty much always side on the side of the municipality so here by not counting the holiday pay holiday leave as an actual time worked they're saving the town eight hours of pay and overtime Right. So what you could do is just unstrike that and it would put it into what, what we're saying. Take yeah, the we could we could keep it. We could the part that I striked out and put a question mark beside is, is the way the personnel policy is now. And we can leave yeah, it I that way. I think we should leave it that way. OK, so we'll leave we'll leave that that way. Um, let me make a note of that. Um, leave Thanks, as is. OK, yeah. Now, these are just differences that I wanted us to discuss. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so everything else has been cut and pasted. Um, so vacation leave. I just simplified this, and I guess I had already done that, I think. Um, you know, we had it based on for part time, based on 20 hours a week, and for the um, um, town clerk and town treasurer, based on 18 hours a week. And um, so I just wrote that it's prorated. Okay, so here's another part that I highlighted. So this is something that I thought we should discuss um, just based on my knowledge of a past, um, what happened to a past uh, town employee, a road foreman. Um, so um, it's, in the, it's in the paragraph that's highlighted. So we have that an uh, employee may accrue no more than 160 hours of vacation time and um, the maximum, for a part-time would be prorated. Any additional unused accrued vacation leave will be forfeited. Um, so if they if they got to 160 hours, um, you know they couldn't accrue any more. Um, right. Um, they'd ha actually basically um, have to be paid for it. Um, I, I so think employees should be paid for unused leave time at separation, regardless yeah. of how they become separated. Yeah, and I think that's Whether we terminate here. them or whatever the deal is, that's just fair. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's the part that I wanted to bring up. Um, so in, in, in our current policy, you know, it says, uh, uh, um, provided that the employee gives at least two weeks written notice of resignation. So I'm aware of a road crew member that um, pretty much quit. Um, there was some bad blood going on. Um, and the town denied all of the vacation time that they had accrued, which always seemed kind of unfair to yeah, me. I don't, I don't think that's right because there's no law that says you got to give two weeks notice. Right. So, um, so what I'll do is basically strike the last part of that sentence, if everyone's okay with that. Yes. The, the VLCT version is underneath in green, and that doesn't have provided that the employee gives at least two weeks written notice of resignation. The reality is that any employee has, you know, their ETO is earned. Correct. Right. And right. has to be paid for. I yeah. agree. I mean, and, agree. And I think that Paul stated it very nicely. Two weeks notice is a really nice thing. That would you be- You don't have problem. to give it. <laughs> you don't have to. By law, you don't right. have to. Right. So your ETO, you own. And mm -hmm. we need to keep up with that. 
Yeah. yeah. And in, in a sense, this may, you know, it was never challenged, but that could be totally illegal. I think it's illegal. I don't yeah, believe it's illegal. illegal. I think that yeah. that is actually straight up illegal. Yeah, because okay, we com so we don't combine the sick leave and the uh, uh, vacation time. So the sick leave is not paid. I just turned in 2,800 hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't get paid for. Um, yeah. But my my annual leave, my vacation time, you get paid for it. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So I'll strike that last part of that sentence. Okay. All right. So moving on. Um, so this all gets very confusing. I've read it a couple times. Oh, and one quick I, question for you, Mike. We were yep. we're not paying anybody at the end of a calendar year for unused leave time, except when they leave. Correct. Remember, we had yeah. quite a long. Because we yes. have people turning in, they, we want them to use their time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then we're going to work. Chuck's got to approve so we don't have people taken. Because just to update, because we had people taking the whole month of June off, and we're not going to be okay with that. I think. Um, I think that's stated right. At that's the with the leave slips. Yeah, we got to get yeah. it approved. Let me, let me get it back up here. Um, so okay, so that kind of defines people. I know it's. I know it's. It was in our current policy as a new change. So, um, I didn't see that it was in there. I knew we had taken it out. The because okay. the problem is someone wants to turn in 160 hours every year. It's going to turn into a big expense for us, and that's yeah. not the idea for vacation time. Yeah, I think somewhere. I think we'll find it. I think it's okay. No worries. We can keep going. Yeah, let's keep going here. Um, so. All right, so sick leave. So this this whole thing I still find kind of confusing. Um, the guidance um, I might check in with um, Jill Muir about it, but she's never mentioned some of the questions I have about this when she's reviewed it. So I think we're okay. But um, so okay, so all accrued or unused sick time will not be paid out time of separation. Right. Um, and then there's criteria, which is basically we, what we have um, is the same as um, what VLCT is recommending. The one thing that we add, and I, one of the questions I had was, should we make it a separate uh, line item is that um, an employee may also use sick leave to attend appointments that cannot be held outside normal working hours. Um, mm -hmm. There is a section of the text in here where uh, in VLCT's version where they're encouraging um, an employee to not, you know, to try not to schedule within working hours, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Yeah, I don't, I, it just becomes a goalie thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I could make this last sentence of part one, a separate line item in this, or um, we could leave it bunched together. It is kind of, it is a little bit different from the beginning. Sure, you could just add another. That'd be. Fine. I don't okay. have an objection. All right. So that I'll just so it's a little clear and as stands out it, better. As long as it stays in there. Yeah. That's nope. Yeah. Terrible. I'll just. I think that's important. I'll put it separate so that it's, it's a. It doesn't get overlooked or it's a little more clear to, whoever reading it. Thank you. Okay. Fred. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, which way am I going? Okay. So the, here's the LCT's version. Um, they don't mention. Um, that at all and these the five reasons that they have listed which we also have listed are basically state law also right which we got to follow so yeah which we have to follow yeah okay um so this there might have text here okay here it is paul um uh i just saw where to go um, it's right there, carry over, paid leave, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. If the uh, at the end of the year, the town will compensate employees at their regular rate of pay for accrued, unused sick leave hours. So, okay. So, you pay them for their unused sick, sick hours? No. no, no, not sick time. No. Oh. Okay. But any of the other paid leave time. Um, so is the get, league saying that if they don't use leave by the end of the year that we do have to pay them? Is that what the rule is? Well, it depends on how we how we pay it out. Um, 
So there's two ways that they mentioned that, that it could be paid out. You can pay, just pay it out in a lump sum at the beginning of a fiscal year. And then um, anything that they don't use, um, basically they have it. If, and then if you, um, if they are accruing hours of, of leave time and they haven't used it, um, let's see, if the municipality will pay out employees for unused sick leave time at the end of the year, insert the, okay, so that's only if. if that's on sick leave too. I was more concerned about the annual leave, the vacation time. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, well, um, so I'm not really sure how to answer that question, but maybe. Well, this has always been a sticky way because I was trying to get, remember, we were trying to have it assigned monthly so that the carryovers were easy, but that right. got a little convoluted for some. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's our choice. The town will or will not compensate eligible employees for unused accrued sick leave at the time of separation right. from employment. employment. Correct. Because nobody does that that I know, unless you have combined time off, which we don't have. Yeah, I, I think that that's really uncommon. Okay. So the next thing on the model policy, um, there's all of these other types of leave. There's bereavement leave. Um, there's parental and family leave, which maybe you have to do. You have, to, you do. have to do. We okay. don't have a choice about that. I mean, some of all these right. are really forward. We don't have it. We have yeah, this one, you, that one you got to do. Okay, it's not in our personnel policy right at the moment. So um, um, that has to be like that. that the good thing. catch, it's probably good that we jumped and grabbed this policy, Michael, because this was a big skip that we, we didn't have that. Right. That's so huge. Paid we don't have that. Leave. Yeah, no, I'm, I think it's good that we're doing this, you know, um, using their model. And uh, okay, and there's short term family leave. Um, also by law. Yeah, okay. Yep. Right. So any of them where they say, according to state statute, blah, 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 and we'll, we'll put it in there. Yeah, if you see VSA, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so there's crime victim leave. Yep. Yep. Uh, so leave of absence without pay. Um, this is an option for us to use. It is an option for us to use, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if we have someone that we want to put on a probationary period because of some infraction or something like that. Yeah. Or, if or they want to take a three month sabbatical and do it without pay. Yep. yep. Um, I think it's a good policy to put in place. Yeah, okay. I think if you don't have a policy, then you're going to be wrestling with it. Because again, it would have to be approved because, you know, obviously there's uh, filling in considering because it could happen. Someone could say they're dealing with cancer or they're dealing with something that's beyond the family leave. They may actually want to take right. a month or six, or, six months off. Or their spouse is deployed, which goes to right. military leave, right? Right. Their right. They're not going to get paid, they, but they want their job back get, when they come back. Right, but they want their job back when they get home because they're going to go with their spouse. Correct. So I think it's good so, to have in there. It's then someone could okay. use it if they needed to. I agree. We're not so having the, to make it up as we go. Yeah. The word policy just brought something into my memory from reading this over. Um, earlier today, um, but I'll bring it up after we go through these. It's, it's the basically the on-call policy. I know that, that we have one, but I don't know if it's actually written down somewhere, but let's not talk about it right now. Let's get through these um, and then uh, I'll bring that, bring that up. Michael? Yes, Robin. On the, for the unpaid leave, can you scroll back down a little bit? Yep, hang on, let me get there. If you're adding town meeting to your list of holidays, I don't think you need to have that first. A, a request would take unpaid right. leave for him. Yeah, we don't. We oh, don't need to do attending that. town meeting. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that is the way some towns do it. They just um, you have to get an okay from like the road commissioner or whatever to take town meeting day off, and it's just an unpaid, unpaid time. But right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good eye, Robin. Which tells me you're following along with this. <laughs> okay, so the military leave, jury leave. Um, now, I think military leave, basically, obviously they aren't paid for it, but we do have to um, reserve their job, I think. Yes, for a certain amount of time, correct. A certain amount of time, yeah. 
Um, so jury leave, um, I think we have to let them go if they're called, but we don't have to pay them. Employers are not legally required to compensate their employees for jury service. That's because they should get compensation. They get right from the court. Right. They get yeah. paid by the court system. Yeah. Okay. Not as much, but they do get paid. They do get compensation. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and we'll so we'll keep this in there, I assume. Okay, so here we get to our comp time. Um, So, and then I hear, I've cut and pasted in what we have. Um, and there is one change. Um, I think that right in the very beginning after the, um, in the first sentence that's in red, um, we have employees entitled to be paid for overtime shall request compensatory satori time and I think that we should change the shall to may because basically what we're saying is that um, if they're entitled to pay for overtime that we require them to request compensatory time by saying shall so I think in that instance we should change the shall to may there's another part of this text where shall um, that word um, is appropriate and I just wanted to get your take on on that what you think of that is it because that first sentence is it's almost like we're requiring them instead of being paid overtime that they request the payment of overtime as a comp time is that your take on how the, the word shall works in, in lieu sentence? of overtime pay so, so i think that that should say they may request compensatory time off so that's my to feeling too yeah, yeah, they may so, request it. Because yeah, again, you okay. could say no. That's yeah. going to be the road commissioner's uh, choice. Exactly. Yeah. Shall, shall is a statement. Yes, I know. Yeah. Right. So I think it needs to say they, they can request time. They can request to have it as comp time. And if it's approved, you can accrue up, you know, there's the rules for it. Right. Yeah. May yeah. Request I, time. I made rule. that change in my paper copy, but I wanted to check with, with you and guys. It, it's really good to have these limits and the approvals because the state got into me for 300 hours one time. The problem yeah. with comp time is real quick, you can outpace your ability to even take it off. Yeah. You know, and that yeah, pretty soon, a... the town, they had to ask me to leave for a month and a half so, and use something like time because they didn't want to pay me. <laughs> yeah. There is the VLCT um, wording, uh, it's, you can in, accrue an incredible amount of comp time. So I, I think keeping it at 40 hours Definitely will keep our town treasurer um, a yep. little less stressed. So, the road and this commissioner is Kill. Road Commissioner, road commissioner Kill, okay. yeah, agreed. All right. Well, that's why I say you chime in, Chuck, if something sounds off here. So, oh, I'm listening. Okay. So, we're oh, um, trying to find the part where it says shall, which may seem to make sense. Okay. Um, it's the sentence just before the bullet points. Yeah. Shall accrue. Yeah. Okay. May yep. you could just say in lieu of overtime pay, full time mm -hmm. employees may request compensatory time off. Yeah, yeah. So the bullets are basically stated in the text, but I think having them uh, just for clarity, having them as bullets. Um, yep. Can't hurt to say it twice. Nope. Um, okay, so that's that's pretty much what we've had before. There's nothing, no surprises there. And then here is where. Um, you know, cannot accrue more than 240 hours of comp time and then accrued overtime hours in excess of 480 or 200 must be paid. I can't imagine accruing. Yeah, we're not doing because the state, not, the state highway, they can only have 80. 80 really. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that. So I agree with Paul. Because you yeah, again, you, so you'll be gone all the time. You'll get done plowing and you can take the whole summer off. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So and we just, we'd rather just yeah. pay people. Yeah. So yeah. we'll keep it at 40. Okay. Um, so then some of this text we have in our own, um, okay. And so that's, let's see. So I'm trying to get my mouse to go where I want it to. Okay. So the rest of this for a good stretch is all boilerplate stuff that we have in the policy. I did, um, you know, 
just add these on who's, um, you know, if there's a complaint for harassment that it would either go to the road commissioner or the select board chair, which in turn, then it would go to the select board. Uh, come on, mouse. You broke it? No, I just, um, I'm kind of at the end of my, the edge of my surface to make it work. You need a bigger mouse pad. That's the problem. Yeah. You try moving your desk. Um, well, I have this kind of funky shelf desk for this laptop and um, I need space for my knees. <laughs> if you're so, a Dilbert fan, that was in one of his comic strips. The boss okay. was moving his desk because he ran out of mouse pad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would actually help in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is sexual harassment. That's all kind of boilerplate. Date um, stuff, yeah. Yeah. And identify who they go to, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is in our, this is, um, the employee discipline is in our personnel policy, um, word for word as what we see here. Um, and then this part, I did make a little bit of a change. Um, so in the one bullet, refusing to do assigned work or failing to carry out the reasonable assignments of a road foreman or road commissioner. And then I just added um, for the sake of the road foreman or road commissioner that um, select board members must make work requests to the road commissioner. Not to the than road people, yep. Hassling and that makes road, perfect sense, yep. Yeah, hassling the road crew about it. Okay, so yeah, I just I really wanted to make sure you I, guys I really were okay with that. I really appreciated the fact that it was gonna be that supervisory level yeah. that was the conversation. So okay, good. So it's good, good choice. It sounds like we're in approval of that. Um, so this is a part that we don't have in the personnel policy, which uh, Jill Muir highly suggested that we do. Um, this is um, a process for uh, basically firing someone, um, and it states the the different steps, um, which we've talked about. You know, a verbal whatever, and documenting and written, it, and, yep. and then written, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this basically covers the town for any legal um, stuff that a, a disgruntled employee might try to um, induce upon the town. If we follow this procedure, we're, we're pretty much good. Um, and then severability is, is pretty much boilerplate. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then um, let's see, there's the different um, addendums. That's what they call them. So this is the form that uh, uh, an employee would sign after reading the personnel policy, basically mm -hmm. acknowledging that they received a copy and that they're familiar with it um, and et cetera. Um, so if there is something in the personnel policy that they get called on and they've signed this, then it's basically you know, their responsibility. Um, so that, you know, we'll include that. And then this is, um, this is the form um, that an elected officer would um, sign off on if they, they are eligible for benefits. So just to make that clear, um, um, an elected, especially town clerk, town treasurer, or and the case of larger municipalities, other elected officials um, are eligible for benefits. Um, and, the, you know, so we'll work out and we have had in the old policy benefits that they were eligible for, um, which I, I have a rough draft of those. I just basically cut from the current policy what those were um, and put it in this new document to, to uh, formalize. Um, and then what's suggested by VLCT and, and is done by most municipalities is that they basically, they're eligible, but they have to choose um, what benefits they want. Um, it's not up to the select board because they're elected officials, we can't really dictate mm -hmm. to them what, um, what they can choose. So, and it is on a prorated basis. It's my understanding at the moment. So, you know, the town clerk, our town clerk and town treasurer work a certain number of hours. So it wouldn't be like they would get full benefits. They would get prorated benefits based on the number of hours that they work. Um, so they're choosing to do this. So they, they're technically, again, for liability issues or just a clear understanding, there's a, this agreement that's, that's basically signed. Um, 
which I think we should do. We haven't done that, um, to my knowledge. Um, I think that so. this is important because that means that there's some clarity about expectations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and usually I, they're... I think it's really unfair that we haven't haven't given given these folks some understanding of exactly what they're well no they're, they're we usually always come to clarity but it's verbally right, right. this is better yeah, yeah, this, this is, is better, better. This yeah is so much better yeah it's so much better a formal document that is signed is i agree i agree anytime for i think just about anything a, a document that is signed solve can solve a lot of problems yeah because then everybody's aware of what they're everybody's agreeing aware to. of exactly what's happening yeah, yeah. yeah. or should have been <laughs> Yeah, so, so the, this is pretty right. much the end of it. Um, so the plan is to um, get the personnel policy finished. Um, and we're pretty, we're pretty much there. Um, Tegan has agreed to help um, with that. I think what I'll do is, is get all of the wording, get all of the guidance out and try to clear up this one issue that I have um, that I'm not even clear enough on to, to, to explain to you guys about, they, they seem to be using accrued and sick leave time and personal time at different times. And I'm wondering what they actually mean with that. So I was gonna to talk to Jill Muir about that part. Okay. And- um, You think we might be ready to vote on this at the next meeting in three yes. weeks? Yes, definitely. Perfect. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna get the wording in the way it is. And then um, Tegan, I think is much more skilled at actually, making the thing look nice, you know, get, get it um, formatted in a way that's, that's, that actually looks presentable. Um, I could probably fumble and curse and get it there eventually, but um, I'm sort of a- You'll be jealous, Michael. In my new job, I have an editor. Uh, I got assigned an editor. It's like, wow, except they call up with hard questions sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah. But they so, make what you, they make me look like a genius. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm pretty much assuming and hoping that Tegan can help, help with that part and, and save me some aggravation. Um, so I'm gonna get, get rid of this. Are there any questions at all? It, Robin, Chuck, you know, you're welcome to, welcome to. My brain hurts oh, now. I, I think it's good. Right. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah. I, Having three weeks will be good. Um, I don't. It won't take me very long to. Now that I, you know, have your OKs on some of the questions, uh, it shouldn't take me very long to get, get it to, uh, um, get all of the extra stuff out, and then um, I'll hand it off to um, Tegan, and and she will make it look good. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and then we're then we're pretty much done. We can. Um, uh, and so the other part of that would be is that we would send this back to VLCT for their lawyers to vet. Um, and the fact that we've used their model template should, should, should make models, it okay. Could, should make it a slam dunk. Um, and hopefully we would have it back um, by our next meeting. That would um, be awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, we would want, I think we got to get a copy of the uh, leave form that we made put into that. And yeah, I've got to get that too. from Brandy, so that can be added um, at the end. Um, and then the actual, um, we do or have just a, um, or just a link, a link to the. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yep. Right, could be a link. Yeah, um, it's although digital, it's going to be a digital work. form anyway, so yeah, a link to the form should work. Yeah, right? and if but if we know. have a paper copy that can be included with a personnel policy, I, I would assume that we would probably be handing our employees a paper copy of this. Um, Probably, and there's yeah. gonna have to be some formatting that has to be done because it's not formatted for that. It's right. formatted for digital, for digital. It's not formatted for someone to do it by hand. Oh, the, um, that, um, the leave form? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, check with, I'll check with Brandy about that. that. Yeah, see, exactly, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, it's not formatted for someone to do it by hand at all. Okay. It's formatted to be a... Yeah, so maybe just an attachment because I think it is a good idea to have it filled out electronically anyway so you can read it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so with any luck, we, we will have it back from VLCT. I'll try to do those changes. Um, well, not much time. I don't have much time this week, but hopefully the 
maybe over the weekend so I could um, head down to the LCT by early of early next week. Let's see. Okay, so um, updates and other business. Um, so we talked briefly about this library roof repair. Um, there was another contractor that was interested. I, I um, emailed them and just said, you know, have you had a chance to look at the roof, um, are you still interested? I got no response at all, um, but I will um, I will actually make a phone call to the person um, and I will get him back in touch with this person who just sent us the bid um, this evening, this afternoon, and let him know that that's way beyond our budget. Um, um, so and that's the only bid you got, Mike? That's the only bid I have right at the moment. Wow. Yeah. I have this one other contractor who's local, who said that he was interested. He also mentioned that he was very busy, um, but he would try to work it in. He used to actually live in Woodbury. Part, um, part of this is your uh, materials cost. I mean, the a sheet of half inch CDX is $100, $95 a sheet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It should be 15. Yeah, yeah. So that's part of what's driving up this cost. Mm. And, which isn't surprising hearing about the construction costs. Um, the, the contractor that did respond also um, in a conversation with him, he warned that on the specs for the, the contract- The shingles, I saw that. Yeah, um, so, and I would, I told him that we would just go with, you know, that um, with that or whatever he felt was best. Um, he mentioned that there have been problems with this- Right, he's, he's proposing company. the GAF Timberline. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we so, can get another quote, at least we'll have some kind of idea if this- guys in the ballpark, but right. my fear is that he might be with current material costs. Yeah, yeah. Which, so. which is essentially untenable for Correct. us right now. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. I mean, we we could come so, up with the money, you know, yeah, basically but, the, the library, maybe, the library. You know, if we do a little bit of triage and wait, we're gonna pay half. Of right, right because of, I think we're getting bombed by material costs. We're getting yeah. killed by material costs right yeah. now. Because yeah, it's time four times what or five times what it ought to be material yeah, really wise. Bad, really bad timing for for a project like this. I know it is. Yeah. yeah. And so maybe we do a we we invest in a little bit of repair work and we wait until. Well, have you looked at? Mess. Have okay. you looked at the shingles? No, Chuck, Chris. Have I you did. looked at the? Okay. Um, I we're did. kind of pushing our limit, I think, at least in that one section. Um, yep. Yeah. The more you know, the more south-facing section it looks pretty or good. If we, on if we end up having to do, maybe we could switch the project to half or something to right. Just do not the totally kill ourselves. We've only budgeted well, ten thousand dollars, right? Well, this this is the thing. Um, the I, I, library is going to be paying for this, so um, and they they are expecting. You know, we got a quote from Larry Eldred before material costs were skyrocketing of. He mentioned that it would be seven or eight thousand dollars, and then we added a couple thousand in case the, the subsurface. Yeah, so we got it around ten, yeah. Around ten. We're well, we're expecting to pay ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's three times anyway. Yeah. So so I, um, so I did hear from some folks in town indirectly, yeah. and they were a little bit aggravated with 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 me with us, I guess. Because okay. That's last not time, the last time that uh, we worked on this project, mm -hmm. when we built the structure, yes, those people came together and just did it. Right. And there were people with the knowledge to do that. And there are. That project. That's and there are. There are people who are willing to give the guidance if we can have people who are willing to help out with the work. Uh -huh. And then it's just material costs, which are still going to be high. Yeah we don't have any actual labor costs because it becomes a two day town project over a weekend. Right. And if, if the people doing the labor are volunteers, there's no liability issues for the town. Exactly. Um, at all. I think that so. we could get away with this in a different way. And maybe it's actually something that we should discuss. Oh, um, I'm, I'm willing to, to look at the volunteer labor. I just want those that are going to uh, propose this need to be the overseers and the managers. To get it done, advertise, get the dumpster. You know, that's that's my only thing. Yeah. All right. So, Chris, uh, I, I I'm going to appoint worth, you. Yep, I think it's worth for me to pursue. I'm appointing you as the chair of the ad hoc committee for, 
for the town volunteers to uh, reshingle this library roof. And I expect a full report at the I, next meeting. I, I agree, it is achievable. It's just what happens yeah. sometimes is that the ones proposing it are not the ones that want to push it and oversee it. And that's all I want to make sure it doesn't I happen. Think that, I think I can find enough people to, to oversee it. And then I can, I think I can drag out enough people that maybe. Sure. Can okay. As long as I, you, I'm you, willing to be one of the, yeah. um, the lackeys doing whatever. I mean, I have right. reshingled roofs before, but yeah, I don't I, have again, the I'll knowledge. I'll throw my back in it too, but I don't want to be in charge of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I think that's fair. So, uh, so, yes, so we uh, need to I, I come up with somebody who is willing, who has the knowledge yeah. and is willing to be in charge of it. Yep. I'm willing to be appointed and, okay. and I will yeah. that person. Okay. All right. Because it is a fairly easy roof. It's just a matter of uh, getting the right stuff there and we could hammer it out in a day or two. Right. Yeah. And I, and I will contract this other contractor who was interested and just see if they're still interested. And otherwise, we won't be shingling the roof this year. That's right. the reality. Right. We just can't do it. Right. Most yeah. contractors, you know, and again, it's a product of the pandemic. They're just totally booked in either doing. Right re you know reconstruction or, or whatever um so everybody's got lots of money right now and they're spending it on building materials yes yep yeah which okay are, so yeah. um this the sooner the better we have you know we can't do anything of course until so after summer, school yeah. closes but we so got to get have, it done before school starts we have to get it yeah. done before school we basically starts. have late june july and early august yep so we've got like basically two months spread yep. out two months we'll have but two months to do it I mean, that's enough time for us to get the materials and three or four days to get the work done, which okay. probably could be done in a day and a half if we do it right. So. The other the other thing that um, I think I sent you guys the RFP, but um, the, look at the scope of work because we do also need to um, replace the fascia and the, and the soffits. Mm -hmm. They're, um, so, and I think we can get um, maybe Larry Eldred to look at it. And I think we, together we could come up with a solution for the entryway to the library where the corner that that um, part that comes out from the library um, where the corner meets on the roof the water has um, run right into the wood it, it doesn't drip off the drip edge the way it comes down in that channel it's run right into the wood and those are totally rotted so we've got to figure out a way to keep the water from um, getting onto the the fascia and the, and the soffits there. The reality is that once the once the shingling on the roof is off, we're going to find a lot of other problems. Yeah, we are. Yeah, you probably are. So that, this guy was planning to just put half inch CDX over the whole thing. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 So, he he priced that of uh, stripping the shingles and sheeting the whole building. Okay. Because right. uh, if you have bad sheeting, the shingles don't last. Exactly. No, and there's no point. Right. There's yeah, no you're wasting your money We're wasting yeah. all our time and, and our money so so um okay so we looks like we we're good there um I'll, the emergency I'll have, I'll have some i'll have some answers in three weeks okay enough. all right perfect that's perfect yep so the emergency generator i just wanted to um mentioned that we did meet with um someone from brookfield services uh, a couple weeks ago oh, 10 days ago or so. Um, members of the fire department were there and the whole select board was there and Larry Eldred and Don Turgeon from the school were there. We basically got a, um, a basic les lesson in, in kind of the overseeing of the maintenance, basically how to check for the oil and the coolant um, and then um, some other kind of um, troubleshooting that we might need to do on the fly um we and the fire department has agreed to do uh, i think it's a monthly check of the um the coolant and the uh oil level in, in the engine for the generator when they do the their checks on their trucks and stuff um so yes. they'll be they'll be doing the overseeing of the kind of basic maintenance um and we had discussed um previously and a little bit there about whether we wanted to change the contract. And I'm not sure what the contract dates are, um, but whether we want to change the contract to have Brookfield services come twice a year. Right now they're coming once a year for a, a, a major kind of 
inspection maintenance, um, I would I would be feel a little bit better based on what happened if if they did start coming twice a year. I agree. Um, okay. And then the other part that we had mentioned uh, was that there would be a site assessment to um, get a sense of whether we needed to upgrade the generator, replace it, get a larger one, et cetera. And um, I think from that meeting, we, we basically, this is my memory, is that the site assessment can't really happen until um, somebody can get, uh, an electrician can get into the uh, school. So we're thinking that that site assessment would probably happen sometime during the summer when school isn't in session, when there wouldn't there'd be- right, you gotta check what the full load is of everybody yeah. connected to it. Yeah, right. so that'll happen sometime, that'll probably this, this summer. Yeah. yeah, it's gotta be over the summer. Yeah, okay, yeah. so- um, And we should also consider it potentially in that site assessment, whether or not it has to be moved. We don't think it does. Yes. Right, we don't, we I, know the propane tank probably will. Right, the- uh, <laughs> The- uh, tank moves, that means that there's going to be a longer run mm -hmm. the existing slab for the generator, which can take a much yeah. larger generator if we wanted it to, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, that should be included. Yes. And um, I will, the fellow um, from Dubois and King that's, that's doing the uh, design work for the, the uh, stormwater um, uh, litigation basins um, that we've been talking about. He, there were some test pits dug um, in the town park uh, last, or actually was it, it was, yeah, last week on Thursday. And he's got to come back up sometime this week. Um, he put some pipes in it and he's kind of um, overseeing the drainage that's there. So he has to come back up to remove those test pipes and to check them out. I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to be there, maybe arrange for him to come when I can meet with him. Um, and we're going to go over to that site where the, the t fuel tank is buried and where the generator is. And I just get his assessment of whether or not that tank would be um, need, would need to be moved. Um, it seems pretty obvious that, that it would be because the whole point of those infiltration basins is to have the water infiltrate into the ground around them. And the generator is like 10 feet away. And I also had the question, Mike, whether it was going to extend into under the basketball court there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Originally it wasn't, but I don't know if it You didn't think there. it went that far? Okay. No, it, no. It, it, was, it wouldn't do that. Okay. Yeah, but, All right. But I don't think he, I don't know if he was aware that there was a, a buried tank there, fuel tank there or not. Um, I don't think he was. Well, don't check with me. I walked over it many times and told you it was above ground. So don't yes. listen to me. <laughs> well, I mean, I, there was a problem that I had right from the get-go, so. Yes, I know. You yeah. mentioned it. Um, sometimes you miss the obvious when you're not looking. Yeah, sometimes things just yeah. sort of disappear in your, in your foresight, so. <laughs> right. um, I guess, my Michael, uh, where are these test wells? Where are these test bores, exactly? These are for another series of infiltration basins. Um, where, but where are they put in, exactly? Where, where are those? Well, we, you were part of the review <laughs> that we did for the first two, I, I think. Was. Yeah. So these are, th there's two more that are being, um, that the fellow was working on 60% designs for. One is, uh, would be placed but uh, out back between the uh, fire station and the post office. Right. Um, and then the other was originally for Church Street and it was gonna be placed next to the Methodist Church, but there's a bunch of ledge there, so. Yeah, it's all uh, ledge, actually. Yeah, so. And then the, the engineer thought, well, maybe we could do it across the road. Um, it's part of the- um, It's a different it's a different gradient. Yeah, different so, gradient. so the way I'm thinking now is that, you know, this was originally designed for Church Street and I guess it was somehow was gonna connect the stuff on the lower part of Cabot Road. And they found a lot of ledge um, yeah. where they were digging in the town park. So it just, at this point to me, it seems like there's no feasible site for it. Mm -hmm. So I think that my feeling is, is that we should probably just let this thing go and not try to do something there. And, you know, we did what we, what we could, but there's no feasible site for it. Um, Thursday when I was talking with him, um, he admitted himself that it probably wasn't feasible to do. Because right. when it was okay. going to be over by church, it was going to be 
uh, taking pattern 14, the bottom of Cabot Road. Yeah, that was the original, original, original plan, yeah. It's yeah. really going to miss it all now. All it's going to catch is what's coming down the uh, Cabot Road. On the one right. Which we already have something for. Um, right. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so my, my feeling was that, you know, I, I'll get in touch with him and also, also get in touch with the uh, Regional Planning Commission person that's overseeing this. Cause I, you know, I think he's probably going to want to try to do some kind of 60% design thing because um, he would get paid for it. Um, right. But I think that it would be money. It's, you know, th this is all part of a grant. I think it's just money that we're um, wasting, really. Um, it if, is. There's no, if there's no feasible site, then why? All that why? we had to do was run GPR over that for two, two transects. And yeah. we would have known. And if they were worth their salt, they would have figured that out within okay. one traverse. So explain what GPR is to the uneducated. So ground penetrating radar is a way to basically bounce a, a radar signal okay. off the subsurface. Yeah. yeah. And you can find where the bedrock is. It yeah. takes you basically, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And if they had done that, this design would have been entirely different. Yeah. Well, if it had just moved around a little more, I think it would have been. You can see ledge down there everywhere. You can see ledge yeah. all over the place, Chuck. Yeah. It's not like it, it wasn't sneaking up on us. No, it's sticking yeah. right up. You know, it's yeah. sticking up on the ground. There are outcrops there, for heaven's sakes. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's flawed in its original design in a way. So, yes, right. I agree. Michael. It should have, it should have, you know, in a way. Um, this, you know, it was based on. Uh, People that did a broad town survey and um, and it was suggested to put it by the Methodist Church, but you know the people that did that um, probably should have done a little more due diligence for the ledge to begin with. Um, Maybe just walk around a bit. Right. Just, just right. Well, the, these were Burlington people, you know, so maybe that's part of it. I don't know. We. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I did. I, I don't. Uh, I don't okay, know, that, I don't really care where they're from. I just know that that doesn't that's not going to work. So. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to, and I and I I'm glad that I have um, your support in in suggesting yep. that. Um, so one final thing, um, the American Rescue uh, Plan Act. You sure? Did, Go ahead. Did he mention anything to you about the one over behind the annex by the skating rink? Uh, no, that one we've looked at a 60% design for, and we've, you know, we did give him suggestions when he showed it to us. And, um, at some point he'll come back to us with a hundred percent design. Well, he's got a 90 now, about a 90. And okay. Is that what he said? Like that, okay. It's looking like that one's going to get shot down too. Oh, okay. Because with the, the amount of insulation they're going to put under it and over it because it gets plowed out through there and no deeper yeah. than it's going to be. It's going to be about three times the cost that they thought it was going to be. Okay. So, so Chuck, we so, talked to him about that when he first brought it up. Yeah, we did. We did. We, did. we talked to him about it right from the get go. So if he's not yeah. redesigning it. Yeah. And he mentioned that the, the type that he would be putting in would be probably okay with that. Yeah. So they said well, he still seems thinking of work, but it's only going to be like five inches deep, you know. And right. you start that's not gonna, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. No, okay. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but um, that's, that's, that's he, fundamentally flawed right from the outset. Okay, he agreed that when we get the parking lot done the way we want it up to school, that it's not going to be worth worthwhile putting it in anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't think there'd be much going there. We're catching most of it uphill now. Yeah, right. and on the other side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So okay. that he, uh, I'm assuming he's going to want to talk to you about that because he said he'd be up and wanted to meet with us. Okay. So yeah, uh, he didn't I, say he just went. I'll try to I'll try to find a time that he can come up. Um, the catch with me is that I usually have you know Tuesdays and Fridays are open times for me, um, with the exception of this week where I'm pretty much working all you know every day, but. So yeah. when, when, you know, his coming up on Thursday, there was, I just, I couldn't be there. Um, and I would have liked to have been, but it's just the way it is.
Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should tell you, I should tell you guys. So I'm on this project in Maine right now, which is why I'm sitting on a porch talking to you. Um, <laughs> oh, you're in Maine. Cool. I am. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm on. I'm, I'm on a porch, the other place that I can get cell phone service enough to <laughs> talk to you guys. Um, uh -huh. So, but if you tell me some dates, I can be. I can try to be there. I just have to schedule around my field time. Okay. When I, will you? When will you be back in, in Woodbury? Yeah, uh, you tell me and I'll make my way back. Well, if I tried to, well, I don't want to, it's a long drive. Um, no, I'm going to try I, to have I, something I, happen. About three uh, hours worth of driving, so it's not that bad. Um, well, I mean, we don't have to, I can, I can contact him and express my concern about the, the site that's being tested right at the moment and, and just saying that we feel we should just drop that entirely. And then if we want to talk more about the, um, you know, by the skating rink, um, you know, we could do that at a different time when you're, when you're back. Yep. That's fine. Done your field like work. And I'd like Chuck to be there. And yep. I'd like Paul to be there if he can be. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we wait until you're a little bit more firm well, on you when guys, you would you guys, be here. If you guys make a date, I'll find a way to get there. Well, I don't want to make you drive all the way back from Maine and then have to go back unless you really want I, to do that. I can, I can make it work. All I've right. driven a lot further for less. Okay. So. Do you think we need to do this as soon as possible or do you think it could wait for a bit? Uh, I think we need to do it in the summertime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 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 So yeah, I, I really are don't. You, are you going to be in Maine all summer? No, no. I'll be back. I'm back and forth all the time. So. Okay. All Just, right. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll get some dates and, and um, I'll send them out. And if it doesn't work for you, we'll, we'll change. We'll make it different. I will make it work. I'm okay. not going to base it around my schedule. I can find a way. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, just briefly, um, yeah, it's time to, time to be done here. Um, I would like to, I did do a webinar uh, with, that VLCT had about the American Rescue Plan Act. And it was basically pretty much the same thing that was in that um, thing that Bonnie Wanager, the director of CVRPC sent to me that I sent out to you guys. Um, but um, she, Bonnie has um, volunteered or said that she would be glad to meet with us at a, at a select board meeting um, to go over um, things that um, the, the plan itself and what the town, what the criteria criteria for eligibility is um, different projects. Um, so I thought I would invite her to come to our next mm -hmm. meeting also. Um, yeah, because Ch Chance and I were looking at our the things we lost and what we spent on mitigation and response yeah. to stuff over the last year and a half. And our stuff is added up pretty high. So we're going to start getting those numbers together. Okay. We and can she could probably, that. you know, if, if you and Chance, well, you'll be here obviously at a select board meeting, but Chance is yep. welcome to sit in on it. Yeah, because we're trying to read through it and put together what we would be eligible for. Yeah. I think we'll I have... think she I think she could help you with that. Yeah. I mean, she is very knowledgeable. Perfect. Because it's a little bit loose, the guidance right now, but well, and it, yeah, and it's not fully established yet, but right. maybe <clears throat> by three weeks from now it, it might be. Yeah, so we're working on that. So because we we would obviously have some interest in that because of our okay. stuff. And I know some members of the planning commission are sort of interested in it too. Um, yeah, because it looks like it's really no money for some pet projects, but it is for things you actually spend or things that uh, extra yeah. money people could have been paid during their responses during the time, whatnot. So that's definitely true. Are, I like the, yeah. the town of Montpelier is trying to recover uh, money that it didn't get from its uh, traffic meters. Yeah, we lost we lost over twenty five thousand in our two years worth of fundraising for our rescue things. Okay, we didn't send letters out for two years now. That's about twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, so for and example, that, and I know that I know that that's eligible. And the thing that you brought up, Chris, about perhaps giving some money to um, CV Fiber for uh, implementation of Woodbury, that is definitely um, um, a possibility that um, we could do that if we, if we choose to. Um, I asked Bonnie that and she said, yes. I think it's is. a good idea, we'll meet with her. We'll put our stuff yeah. together and see what we come up with for everybody. Yeah. Okay, I so- think, um, I think it's really worth considering if we, if we wanna have people who can work efficiently. Yep. Yes, uh, no, it, it, and it's part of the, the new town plan that we're working yep. on. That, right. That's And it's eligible. 
top I priorities. Think, yeah, yep. And there's money available thing. for that. I think it should be, you know, I'd argue that it should be prioritized in a way, but yeah. I think it's a conversation that we should definitely have. Yeah. And we can, you know, this project of maybe trying to fix up the town hall, that's, you could, we might be able to stretch that and Bonnie could advise us on that. Um, um, so there are other projects that um, might sort of indirectly apply there. I think there's special paperwork that you have to do for something that is a little bit uh, of a stretch. We're not under the gun for this right at the moment, no. are we? Anyway, there's some no, time. There's no, so. no deadline. So I think it's it's important that we get all the stuff together that's eligible and then take a thoughtful look at yeah. what, what the high priority things are. Yeah, that's what towns are being encouraged to do. Come up with ideas and and then see if they're eligible or figure out ways to make make them eligible. Um, so okay, good. So I'll I'll let I'll see if Bonnie can come and I'm pretty sure she will be able to come to our meeting. Um, that's it on the agenda. I'm good. Uh, one quick question, Chris. Yep, Could go you, ahead. Can you text me uh, Chris Davison's telephone number? Heck yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll send it to you just in a moment. All right. I'll I'll get a hold of him and uh, see what what's going on. We'll set up a time. Yeah. I appreciate that, Chuck. Thanks. No problem. Glad to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll just bring up one other thing. Um, I have the DVRPC TAC meeting tomorrow evening. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'll just record back on that when we're together in three okay. weeks. All right. Okay. So, right. how are the black flies up in Maine? Uh, eating me alive on this porch right now. I so figured I was going to ask you if you're sitting outside, you're probably dinner. Yep, I am suffer. I'm a little uh, bloody and I covered. We, I guess we better adjourn then. Huh? <laughs> he wants to go in. <laughs> I am covered in deep, and uh, okay. you know, that'll be its own thing <laughs> later on in my life. So. <laughs> They're pretty right. good here in Woodbury too. So yeah, they're pretty bad. Yeah. I'm not outside. No worries. <laughs> no, me neither. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Tegan, I just you know we we go off on a lot of tangents during these meetings, as you've just witnessed. You um, can just sleep through those. <laughs> don't don't try to get those. Um, yeah, and eventually you'll kind of learn when what we're talking about is important and needs to be in the minutes, and when we're just kind of off blabbing. somewhere blabbing. <laughs> Yeah. So I'll try to get the draft sent out to you tomorrow to leave some time okay. for edits. Perfect. Might Great. Thank I think you. by statute we have five days to get the draft. Right. Yeah, and, it, and of course the question is are they calendar days or business days? But um so VLC. I think we're all in my nice. view, we're we always good if they're posted by Friday. Yeah. It'd be great. The calendar days are is what VLCT yeah. um Suggest. We meet on Monday. If we have them out there by Friday as a draft, that's fine with me. Yeah. And even just your notes can that can yep. be considered a draft, if um, which may be what happens because I won't have a whole lot of time to to go through them. Yeah, because um, it's just draft minutes. So. By Friday, yeah, yeah. Good. So, all right. Any motions to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah, he's got favor. no blood left. I let's talk about adjournment for the next half hour. <laughs>